Are you a brew head? I'm a brew head. Are you a brew head? I'm a brew head. Y'all a brew heads? Yeah, we brew heads. So pour a glass of craft beer. We can do this. Yeah. What's good, y'all? This is C Certified Brew Head. And I am Nathan from Nathan Does Beer. Welcome to episode 166 of Beer Nothish the Podcast Adjunct Series, Nathaniel. We are going tonight to one of our mutual favorite places in this glorious province of Ontario. We're heading yes, we out are. to uh, Prince Edward County. Uh, such a wicked spot. A, what, how would I describe it? It's like a, I feel like it's going to be one of the, the, it's on the way and it's very well on the way to being one of the best beer hotspots, I think, in the province. For sure. I would say so. It's like in the past couple of years, even it's already had like two new breweries open in it, which like even just in the past year, I think. Yeah, you're right. And just doing We're just oh, it's popping. <laughs> it's popping. I I'm sure we'll find out how many breweries are out there now. If I'm guessing, it's somewhere in the teens. They got a, a really great wine scene as well. I think there's like forty something wineries last I checked, and uh, it's just it's just a vibe. It's one of the best places you can go in the summer. The winter's ooh, a little rough with the old uh, with the old roads, but um, it's a it's a beautiful place. And this brewery is, has been a fave for since, basically since they opened with a real, like as it says in the name, like a fine approach to craft beer, and it's much needed. And it's uh, it's it's been really cool to watch. I feel like they came in and really kind of changed the game out out there, and things have kind of only got better since they came in. It's a, it's a beautiful, and, and strangely enough, and embarrassingly enough, this is the first proper time I've had him on the pod to uh, to do it, which yeah. is ridiculous, and I don't know what happened. Long overdue. So, long overdue. So let's just get this going. Guys, please welcome yeah. Justin De Silva of Matron Fine Beer in the building. Oh, shit. We're going to turn it up. The guys oh, are a bit quiet. Oh, oh there we are. <laughs> How you doing, man? Welcome, finally. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Honor and a pleasure, sir. Yes, I know we only did the link up, so people might have heard the link up episode. That was yeah, a couple years ago, far, I guess. Far too long ago now, probably. Far too long. I know we've been talking about doing this forever. We come and see you a few times, and we talk about yeah. it, and whatever. It's one of those things that just kept not happening, and then we're like, me and Nate were like, we're doing it. Go we're again. here so now. We're here. We're now. here. Happy to have you, bro. Uh, excited to get into the story for the first time. So we're gonna need a beer to do that, aren't we? So let's. Uh, what yeah, are we let's cracking? Do it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, is this, beer. Is this the flagship? Would you say, or is it just the first sort of thing that you did? Uh, it's it's my love. You know, this yeah. is when people ask, "What's your favorite beer?" This is my favorite beer. Hell yeah! Um, but I'd say Janky is probably the the flagship. The flagship. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, at the brewery, I've had. The, I feel like every time I go, I get this. It's a, is it on? Um, forgive my memory. Is it on Luca? Yeah, yeah, we yeah do that's the, right. uh, nice. The side pull with it. Yeah, let's go. So this is specifically a lager beer, B I E R. Could yeah. you uh, maybe explain the what specifically a lager beer is, maybe in comparison to other kind of crispy styles? Um, yeah, I guess uh, it's it's like a nice catch-all for for the approach to the beer, I guess, uh, in all the little small towns in Germany, you know, they might make a pills, they might make a Marzen, might make a, a lager beer. And that gotcha. would be like how the town kind of likes the beer, how they like as the brewer, their expression of the lager without necessarily being like stylistic. So that was kind of our approach to this. We huh. don't love to put it in a box. I'd say it's like an aromatic hell hell is um, Interesting. a little bit hoppier than than a hell is should be, but uh, gotcha. but not as hoppy as a pilsner, and that's that's a lager beer for me. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, look at this bad boy. It is it is oh, yeah. crystal clear, wicked head, um, and it's definitely got um, a, like a very hoppy nose to it like it's got yes. uh, like it's got a good hit of spice coming right off the pour i found yep great little cereal presence too there first of yep. all boys cheers get that in you cheers, cheers here i got the i got the floof master going right here mm. oh yeah you sure do <laughs> oh yeah look at that <laughs> very nice <laughs> have you got a well, luca that's how, we, that's how we do right that's how we do it how do you um is that like a slow pour when you're doing that or is it like a bit of an aggressive the other way 
I did a little slow pour, like, you know, hard at first, build up mm -hmm. the foam, let it settle out. This is also like a really fun glass for mm. drinking yeah, yeah. lagers in because it just condenses the foam nicely. It's perfect. This is such a great beer. It's it's, such, it's super grainy, which I really mm -hmm. like. It's just really Very. the mold is so present. It's like it's got a touch of sweetness, but it's kind of mellow. It's not like anything over the top. The the grassy bitterness is is like money in there. I see what you mean about like a like a hoppy hellas. Mm -hmm. No, what did you say? Aromatic hellas. Yeah, yeah like a, a aromatic hellas. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, some some nice like late edition hopping on the. Uh on the logger or on the whirlpool sorry and we take our time loggering it you know usually we try to get this beer going for for 10 weeks if possible for 10 damn. oh wow yeah yeah um we just keep enough in the system that you can let it hang out you know right. uh and we use barn owl malt in it too and i think that like really comes through in that like nice like crispy or like grassy grainy character on the uh on the malt side of things. Hell yeah. So yeah. 10 weeks. And uh, 10 if, weeks if awesome. I'm not wrong, um, Yaysayer, you've got on offer pretty, uh, like pretty close to all the time, if not all the time. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. That's dope. Is I that, like every time it, I've is there. that like, is that um, kind of a burdensome, uh, like, like taking up, t uh, taking up tank space kind of thing with, like with doing a, with doing a 10 week logger or is that like, or is that just kind of built into your plan of what's uh, like of what's on offer at any one time? Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> it's built in. Like we've ensured that we have enough tank space that we can do it. Usually there's like a batch in kind of each stage. So, uh, you know, one at, more or less actively fermenting in like, uh, in, kind of primary and then there'll be one lagering in like the uni tank and then we'll have one lagering in bright tank we've added some lagering tanks into our our program to ensure that we can give this beer the time that we want to give it so nice. the time that it love deserves that. you know i love that <laughs> oh now that's a name right there the time it oh, deserves. Yeah. oh yeah yeah i've got that covered that's great um the name as well by the way where did that specific? Because I swear there's like either a band or a song with this name. Uh, there, this... there is a band that okay. everyone asks. And okay. Yes, some good tunes. Some good yeah. tunes. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's uh, it's the beer that says yes to everything. It's a yaysayer. So. Oh. That's that's you know goes with any situation. Mm. That's why we call it yaysayer. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That's actually a very I think good explanation. I think they just blew Craig's mind right there. Yeah. I don't know why I never put it. I always thought I was pronouncing it wrong. That was the other thing. I was like, oh, that's yeah, what I yeah, think. Yeah, Sayer, we get a lot. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, Slayer, we also get a lot, which is pretty metal. <laughs> now that's a... I was like, man, I got to make a beer like that. Be like an imperial... <laughs> like... Yeah, Sayer. Like yeah, like a, like a bourbon barrel aged or like a neutral oak aged... <laughs> Eight percent pill, like you know what I mean. Well, if yeah, if, if you ever do a, if you ever do a collab with like Vox and Hops or Third Moon, mm. it's going to have to be called Yay Slayer. Yeah, I'm into that. I'm here for that. <laughs> I feel like that can work. Um, that's dope, man. That's another thing that um, I mean, I know we'll probably get into it, but I I feel like being that this is like a lager beer, I feel like, which is like arguably one of the least common styles of crispies that I would find around here, like in Ontario, Canada. Period. Um, yeah. You do some of the most interesting styles that I've ever seen. Like I've the styles that I have discovered through you, such as the most interesting ones, like that Zoigel beer. Ah, Zoigel beer. Which yeah. is <laughs> what? Why? What's the? That is it just because? I like. Yeah, I, I feel like because yeah. yeah, a few other folks went and did some collabs with that recently, um, yeah. which is really cool to see. And I, I would at first, if I hadn't seen you do it, I would have been like, "What the fuck is that?" But it's wow. um. It's perfect. I'm oh. glad we could help. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Community <laughs> service. What's the um, thinking in the approach to doing all of these maybe less than, you know, less, less than known styles, at least around here? Um, I think that was kind of always a bit of an appeal to craft beer for me. It was like, uh, you know, exploring different uh like styles from the past that might not have a lot of, uh, I guess, like popularity and just like taking a modern approach to it, seeing what they might taste like. Mm -hmm. um, and 
with matron like often using the ingredients that we have access to to inspire like what we what we make too um so we were looking to make a beer that really showed off Devin's Munich malt and uh we wanted to do like a very like simple simple beer with it like basically pilsner malt and munich malt and a nice light hopping from some locally grown cluster hops in it and mm. uh we didn't really we knew like what we wanted to do as far as what we wanted it to taste like we could see it in our minds so to speak but it didn't really fit into a style necessarily. And since it was so like inspired by what we had access to and like the community of growers around us, you're like, this is like almost the concept of a Zoigel beer, so to speak, which is like a very communal, communally driven beer. So uh, that's kind of why we decided to call it that and it had like a nice uh, story behind it and no one was making one. So it seemed like we could uh, you know, do a little bit of, uh you know making it our own and kind of introducing something pretty weird and unusual to uh our beer culture to to the market i guess hmm. i like that yeah is it i guess it's another like an opportunity to kind of like chat with consumers too because they might be like hey what see the menu like what yeah. the hell is that yeah what's a zoigel beer <laughs> everyone asks what's a zoigel beer at the tap room and it's just like uh it, I, one of my favorite things about craft beer is like is like learning stuff and like you know helping teach people about it so if we can kind of get a conversation going and you know tell you about like a kind of forgotten about style from you know an important area of beer culture then let's go i'm here for that <laughs> love it hey man that's great yeah, yeah that's super dope and um, spe uh, speaking of uh, doing styles that um, that no one else is doing, um, uh, like and we've talked about old forgotten styles, but also new styles too. Because um, thinking back, and I don't know if you were uh, like if you were definitively the first, but the first in my observation, uh, cold IPA in uh, like yes. in, the, in Ontario was Leeway. I'm pretty sure. I think it was. Yeah, yeah. We hit that. Uh, I listened to that podcast with uh, Wayfinder. And we had made a beer more or less in this style without realizing it. And we we're like, we just <laughs> wanted to make like a super dry, warm fermented, uh, like hoppy lager. Cause like these things should work together. And we listened to that podcast and we we're like, yo, that's what we just kind of made. So, uh, awesome. minus like we didn't do a huge rice addition in it. Cause like our, our water profile is, is makes beers very dry. So, right. um, yeah, it. We were like, "Fuck, let's call it a cold IPA." <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, it it was good. We're actually making that beer uh, again. We haven't done that one for I don't know, maybe like two years. Huh. And um, yeah, we were like feeling a little nostalgic for it and wanted to bring it back and make a few changes. Uh, so that's cool. I always that I, one, I guess I always really liked that one, Same. and uh, the. Cold IPA, I like. I found is a style that, uh, uh, like, and I've had a lot of them that I've liked, but I've had also a lot of them that have basically, for, for all intents and purposes, have just uh, like have really just been IPLs. And I, like, I think there's a subtle difference. Like, I think there's a mm -hmm. subtle difference to it um, that is often uh, like that is often neglected. Where like I think. Um, I think Leeway hit that uh, hit that kind of subtle point of um, like you were just describing what uh, like what it was like it's not quite just a uh, like a hoppy lager like there's kind of more like yeah. more going on to it than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I think uh, an IPL is cold fermented. That's a big mm -hmm. difference. It is yep. a cold fermented beer, and it has space and room uh to stylistically put in uh you know some some stronger malts some munich malts some, some caramel malts even if you want to get uh crazy like that and uh the cold ipa should not right pilsner right. malt pilsner malt pilsner malt pilsner malt mm. and you know wayfinders uh um recipes would say that you should 
have a large portion of rice or corn in it. Um, ours did not, and we still got it like very, very dry and with like a nice perceived dryness to it. We're going to do a batch now and try putting in like a, a small portion of rice and see if we can make it even drier, but just not, not as much as they do. Mm. Mm. That's great. Yeah. I guess uh, that is, I forgot about that, that you were the first. That's actually pretty dope. It's, it's a little strange, that one and Brutes, like, never, like, popped off, I guess. We yeah, should... we never got in, we never got into the, the Brute. I, never tried the Brute? In any, in any brewery I've worked at, I never, I don't know, never got into it. But well, fair. Yeah. Yeah. Cold the... IPA, I love making lagers. I love playing around with lager yeast, so. Right. So it fits yeah. the bill. That's yeah. dope, man. Yeah, I love that. So I know we're kind of skipping ahead there, but I wanted to get into the story because I we've never had that on here. So, like, how did you personally get into beer, and then how did that kind of lead up to Matron? Yeah, um, I did not get into beer intentionally. I'm gonna say uh, I lived in Ottawa, and I like finished university and did did a bit of traveling abroad lived in the caribbean for a year and mm-hmm. was like you know came back trying to sort my life out and i was having some some wings and some beers with some friends at the clock tower brew pub in ottawa and nice. i was just like i love cooking so kind of had an interest in how beer was made and had, you know, had some several kind of beer experiences that i look back on and be like yeah that was like kind of me forming my um curiosity about beer and then uh i'd mentioned to my friend when we were having wings that it'd be cool to learn how to make beer and she was like i will put you in touch with the owner here uh i used to work here and you know he'll probably hire you so (laughs) he he did that she did that for me and uh and yeah i got an interview they needed some help in the brewery like you know with cleaning kegs and you know, just kind of general work in the brewery. So, uh, I got hired and just really enjoyed the process of going in and like learning stuff every day and being able to like complete, you know, see something from like start to finish. Um, Mm. and every time I go in, I'd, I'd learn something new and I'd learn something new and, you know, develop a, you know, a sense of what I enjoyed about beer. And, uh, and then one of the guys I worked with was going to school in Chicago and Munich. So he gave me all of his homebrewing equipment. And this is when, like, I'd say the obsession became, (laughs) started because, you know, when I want to, my like personality, when I want to learn something, if, if I'm interested in it, like I'm going full in, I, I will learn everything I can about it until I'm like, I'm, very proficient at this sort of thing. So I, every day I wasn't working, I'd be like home brewing at home, testing stuff out, understanding how, you know, the ingredients worked, um, from like a, almost like a cooking perspective, like, uh, what things tasted like when you did this with that and, um, just developed a palette for, for how to make beer. And then hmm. I worked at the clock tower for a, about a year, I think, and then took several months off to go travel around Europe. Um, My partner Mallory and I, we, you know, went to all the great beer drinking nations and uh, spent, yeah, several months just kind of like immersing ourselves in in the beer culture. Uh, We came back, I got back in at the clock tower and I started uh, doing sales for Nickelbrook. in Eastern Ontario, which was cool. I worked with like Ryan Morrow and, uh, and John Romano, um, learned a lot from that kind of aspect. Uh, and then at that point I had left the clock tower and I started doing some part-time brewing, um, to keep my, you know, my need to do that (laughs) at bay with, uh, with beyond the pale when they were in their like tiny little brewery. So I spent some time, working with those guys. Um, it was a lot of fun and like, you know, they were just like constantly evolving and innovating and pushing. And, uh, you know, they were like a, a really fun brewery at a, a very fun place to work. Um, when, 
you know, if we were in that stage of craft beer. And then uh, they had put me in touch with a fellow named Ron Shore from Kingston, um, who was looking to open a craft brewery in, uh, in, in Kingston. So, uh, he was looking for a consultant and they're like, you know, he, Justin is a good brewery and he probably help you out. And, uh, I started chatting with Ron and he wanted to get me down there to start like, you know, testing some recipes and stuff. So I worked for him as a consultant for a little while. And then, you know, eventually things got off the ground after uh, about a year and Stone City got opened in Kingston. So I helped uh, open that up and, and brewed there for the head brewer for like four and a half years. Right. Um, what was which, that from? From what year, from which years? From 20, like we started the project, I guess, in 2013. And oh, wow. uh, the brewery opened in like summer of 2014. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I, I think I had left in October of 2018. Okay. And, you know, we had, uh, had decided at that point we were going to open Matron. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we had a great time. Like, that was like a crazy, crazy, amazing experience. Like, it was, it was hard. We ran, uh, you know, didn't really, I'm going to say started, I feel like you don't know what you're doing and then you quickly learn how to do it. Uh, and we made a lot of cool beers and tried out a lot of different stuff. And I think we're in a very interesting position to just like be able to, you know, brew whatever we wanted and see how people responded to it. Um, and, and then, yeah, like I think from there that really developed like our sense of like, Mallory and I got to work together on that project mm -hmm. and uh, we really developed our sense of what um, we wanted to brew if we were going to brew our own or start our own brewery and how uh, you know how we wanted to like run a business when we started our own brewery um, and we wanted to do it with friends and we wanted to you know make a make a place that was like an enjoyable place to work where, you know, everyone works together and respects each other. And we had been working, uh, at stone city with our friend, Jess, who had kind of taken over our, my role at, uh, at nickel Brooks. She took on the mm. Eastern Ontario like sales position there. So, um, you know, we asked her if she wanted to be a part of the project too. And, uh, she, she did. So she was crazy enough to join us. <laughs> And, uh, and yeah, our, our little, you know, crew came together from there. So, okay. yeah, that's dope, man. Um, I wanted to, just before we go extra deep in on matron and sort of the, you know, intention and approach and everything there, um, the, I don't know if we want to crack the other beer. I could, you guys are almost done. We'll, we'll, I'll ask this question first and then we'll do the next beer. Cause that shit just disappeared. Yeah. That's gone. Um, it's gone. <laughs> I love this beer so much. Like it's it's phenomenal, bro. The Stone City was one of my favorite breweries for a long time. So I do music, and I was also doing obviously the beer stuff. And one place we had a whole bunch of like music friends that we always performed in was Kingston. So cool. I was living in Montreal, going back and forth to Toronto quite often because my girlfriend Tiffany, her mom's, she's from there, and her mom's there, my brother's there. So we're going to Toronto a lot. And our favorite thing, well, how I discovered Stone City, this is just connecting the dots, and I'm glad you told me all of the dates, because now I'm like, oh, okay. Dudes, the rap dudes, because of my little selfie beer thing before the podcast, would sometimes, like, there was dudes in Kingston who would be like, hey, here's a sixer of Bali days, and they'd give me all the different stuff, yeah. and they were mad proud. One of our good friends in Kingston, we always stayed at his house there, and he put on the shows. He always took care of us, and he gave us me and my brother a four pack of the four flagships in like the six fifties with the brown Sick. levels. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. the OG, the West coast IPA, the fucking whatever the, else. The it oatmeal, was. Like the oatmeal stout. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All yeah. of that. And I remember drinking them. And to be honest, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't, I, th I was sort of learning about beer at the time and didn't know. it. I remember me and my brother, like in Montreal drinking them and being like, yo, these are fucking great. And then we both started going there. So he had friends get him stuff every single trip. 
usually it was either on the way to Toronto or on the way back. I pull in, we get some food from like A&W and we go to, we pull up on Princess Street. I'd be like, Tiff, we're here. Let me go in. And I saw you there a couple of times. And I, I guess I, I can't remember where I met you though, but I, yeah, you guys were, I'll talk about that in a sec, but you guys were always like, I really appreciated what you did at Stone City, dude, because you were doing like single, like the single hop series, like, and you were using yeah. like the the real popular like Raquel and stuff. It was the first one that comes to mind that I really enjoyed, and like, you were just doing all sorts of styles that were really fun. Nate is going to agree with me on this. Still to this day, the best Gozo I've ever had was Yacht Rock. Um, oh my god, yes, it was just yeah, out of fucking that control. One a, that one had a. a a good run there yeah it was glorious honestly mm-hmm. and, and like there was just i don't know i just really appreciated your approach and i was like how is this brewery and i didn't really appreciate that maybe the size of kingston at the time because i was like we go in i didn't know where i was we'd stay at our friend's house no idea we do these rap shows and then we'd stay over and then we go so like when we were driving in i was like i knew how to get to the main street and that was kind of it i didn't really understand so i was like oh, a small town and you know how they do I, I, it was mind blowing for me in my earlier days of beer that like a small town like Kingston, which isn't really that small in hindsight, was making such great beers and, and it was just such a cool approach. I don't know if you could sort of just speak to that a little bit. Like it was the innovate. I guess what I'm trying to say, it was the innovation level of something like Toronto or Montreal yeah. or Vancouver in Kingston to the point where I can get all the stuff in Montreal or Toronto, but I'm like, no, 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 we're going to stone city every time. That's um, sick. I loved it. I don't know if you can speak to that at all. Cause yeah, sure. Yeah. That's uh very flattering and, uh, and pump my tires a little bit. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> at least I can do, bro. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, we, we did a lot of cool stuff out of that little brewery and like looking, looking back on it, like it was just, I guess, such a fun experimental time and mm. on a system that small, like you can just be so creative because people drink it by the, by the glass and, and it goes quickly. Um, but, uh, but yeah, like we, we traveled a fair amount. So, you know, we'd go be on the West coast and like going down to the States and stuff, going to hit up a lot of breweries and there's certainly a lot of inspiration coming through at the time, which was a lot of fun. And, uh, we just wanted to like try new stuff and, you know, see, introduce people to new things and, and like educate through, through what we were doing with the beer. Um, like hence the, the single hop series, it's like a great way for us as brewers to like experience all these like new varieties that were being released at the time and um you know teach people about like what different hops taste like and how you can express hops through through beer um but uh yeah it was it was just uh kind of like you know make whatever beer you wanted to make that was that was like a lot of fun and basically ask your friends what they they wanted to drink and try to try to come up with a recipe for it right it was uh dope. yeah it was neat that's cool man I, you, I feel like you really made a, a large impact with what you were doing out there though like i feel like it was probably maybe even bigger than you thought and i think that's probably why matron people were so excited like people like oh yo justin's doing this like all the, i feel like it was outside of you know because it was a time I'm, I'm thinking of back around to you know now you told me it was 2014 when that opened like i'm yeah. thinking 2015 16 17 um back when we were going through and i feel like it was like you were sort of there was like bellwoods that were really dominating in toronto as far as like you know bringing haze from like 2016 i believe it was and and you guys i feel like we were just really like in that in that lane like really just doing fun innovative stuff that typically you wouldn't find in a town like or a city like Kingston. And it was like, I don't know, I think it's really cool. And arguably might not have got, I feel like the people who knew, who knew, knew what was up and yeah. you might not have got your props to an extent, but kind of the success of Matron is almost testament to people knowing maybe. Oh, I would say yeah. for sure. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and, and the, the and as much as uh, Stone City is no more, but like it definitely left an impact on the, the like on the Kingston scene with the folks that have popped up <clears> now, <throat> and I would say you definitely set the stage for uh, like a pretty bumping beer scene in uh, like in Kingston right now. Like to look like to Great look point. ahead, uh, like to look ahead a few years to like to what we've got now. Like Kingston is a pretty popping scene. Agree. Yeah, they got uh, quite a few good breweries yeah. now. Um, 
Yeah, that's, I mean, that's incredible to, to, to hear and, you know, think that uh, we made such an impact with what we were doing there. Um, we, yeah, like, uh, I guess we had just like a lot of room and I'll give, you know, Ron a lot of credit for that. Like he let me just do what we wanted. And um, the, the community though was like so receptive to it. Like when I was selling for Nickelbrook, my best account was at the red house downtown and they would plow through headstock IPA there. And, you know, we, we couldn't, we couldn't sell the stuff in Ottawa. Like no one hmm. wanted to buy it in Ottawa at the time because huh. people just weren't on IPAs yet. But in Kingston, you know, they, they were drinking big hoppy IPAs. And hmm. so, you know, when Ron had approached me about, uh, you know, starting the brewery in Kingston, I was like, okay, like, you know, there's people, people will be there for it. You know, we'll, right. we'll be able to sell beer. So that's why we, we put out as one of our like starting beers uncharted, which was like, you know, pretty, pretty solid West coast IPA, pretty hoppy, yeah, good alcohol on it. And, um, that was like our, our best selling beer, like pretty quickly. Huh. We also did, uh, you know, windward, which was, essentially our, our gateway beer, I'm going to call it like it was the blonde ale of the time. Uh, that was that. kind of requested of me to make like a super approachable, you know, like blonde ale. And I was like, ah, I'm not going to make a blonde. Ale. <laughs> 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 not that I'm better than that. At one point I did, I did make a blonde ale and like, you know, now I look back on it and I'm like, Oh man, I'd love to drink a blonde ale. But, uh, <laughs> at the time, like I was like fucking IPAs, you know, Damn. uh, so uh we did we did windward which is a whip beer and and honestly like pretty heavily inspired by allagash white because nice. the beer is just like so delicious <laughs> heavenly yeah yeah <laughs> heavenly it is heavenly it is truly heavenly it's what heaven would taste like <laughs> um, yeah uh and that one was like you know probably our our equal best-selling beer like hmm. you know to be like up and down on on which one outsold the other hmm. but, uh yeah. Interesting. Interesting that Kingston had a big hoppy like preference. I would not have picked that. That's pretty cool. And that's actually a a dope insight coming from someone who was working as a sales rep and, and able to bring that level of like local, you know, quantitative knowledge and be like, yo, we can't sell this in Ottawa, like the second biggest city in the province, but in Kingston, the shit's flying. Yeah. So you know what that means? We could do these styles and then people will probably be quite excited to support the brewery on the main street type thing which is crazy yeah that's dope yeah. um I rem i'm trying to think because i was like when did we meet i i think it might have been we did um it was called the ontario fermentation festival was that it oh yeah yeah, yeah. prince Edward county yeah yeah in oh, uh, weird to think about all right yeah that was 2018 <laughs> i think yeah because i didn't know what it was we did like a live yeah you call it, panel or whatever and i think we might have met there finally mm -hmm. for that time and that was it that means it wasn't long before you left like a matter of months yeah yeah which is crazy That's um nuts. and with that what is nuts is our empty glasses god damn it yeah right. yeah is it dapper dapper lfg so i don't think i've had this one is this a new one uh no we do this one every year but yeah. it's like a, a winter seasonal Season. Okay. Maybe maybe it won't be a winter seasonal. No. Anymore. Maybe. No. Ooh, we're like kinda, yeah, we kinda kinda love this beer. So this is a Vienna lager, just to uh mm -hmm. quantify for the for the folks there. Um a four point seven percent. Loving it. And it's interesting, is this intentionally sort of similar ish to Yese as far as like kinda like a different phase of a sunset? Uh, the can yeah sorry yeah sorry. i think i think that's like the the vibe that designers go with for these ones love it yeah so it's like a crispy like a a late winter sunset on a uh, brown on a nice brown february day i like that <laughs> i like that that's yeah. uh that's smart oh i love oh it smells great i love Look the that color oh get that yeah, nice amber amber color we went with like the uh amber style vienna love it 
Oh, look at that. And head again, man. you know, this was uh, a progression Oof. from handsome. We made handsome first, and then we were like, let's get more into the malt. And Devin gotcha. at Barnell makes a very lovely Vienna malt. Um, so we we're like, how can we express this, get into this one? So we designed a recipe based around that. It's like primarily uh, Barnell Vienna with uh, a bit of Barnell Munich. And then we do like a, a faint, a faint touch of some German roasted malt in it. Okay. Just to get the color and uh, add like a tiny little bit of toastiness. And as the beer lagers and the beer ages and like, any of the like hop character starts to like mellow out on it. That toastiness mm -hmm. really comes out and it's, it's delightful. It's very delightful. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's also I a think... Vienna lager beer just to quantify that. Yeah. Cheese like the honey, beer. the honey character from the Vienna malt and like the, the fruitiness oh, yeah. of the Munich malt with the, the hops and the yeast, it like almost comes across in this like, like fruity, fruity, toasty way like it reminds hmm. me of like uh grapes and and shreddies <laughs> shreddies oh the <laughs> child's yes. breakfast you know <laughs> takes me back to my childhood i like that children's breakfast are extra fire as adults <laughs> okay dude this is great you know one thing and this is like always my thing sort of in the beginning of the night i always find my palate just takes time to sort of adjust and i always worried that i misperceive some flavors I feel like from both of them, and this feels more like a water thing. I'm getting like a bit of a like a saline saltiness. Is that? Am I tripping out? No, from no, either of you boys. No, have a nice like minerality in mm. our uh, in our water. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. Minerality. Yeah, yeah. I just feel like it's like not what I'm drinking. It. It's like thirty seconds after a sip. I'm like, oh, it's like nice and round. Yeah, and now oh. I've had a second or third sip. I'm like, okay, now it's kind of going, and it's just becoming more a part of it. But it was like, mm. wasn't sure if I was like, like you know, dreaming. No, no, you got that. I love it. Vienna Absolutely. Lager Beer is that the is that named like that for the same reason that you stated before about the Yesea being a Lager Beer? Uh, yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is wicked, dude. Yeah. yeah, so like the very, very much like a like a toasty toasty mm. bread with uh, like with honey sweetness go like going on here and light like really light but notable roastiness to it and yeah oh, this is so fucking good yeah yeah this one like uh, I feel like when I when I presented it and I was like this is what I want to make it was met with some hesitation from like. <laughs> all other parties in the company um and and they trusted in me mm -hmm. and now they're all like this might be our this is the best here. okay yeah. um is there it's interesting was there a same level of resistance for a zeugel beer as for a vienna which to me a vienna is pretty like straightforward as opposed yeah, to i think it was i think i presented it as like it's gonna be like an amberish lager Gotcha. <laughs> like in the, based uh, on the animal, be like yeah, amber okay. in color. And at the time, we were like, ah, amber. So I don't know. Mm. <laughs> um, Probably around the time that like amber had really like fallen out of favor. It's like it's like okay, time. like the like, like the time. time like the time of yeah. red ales has passed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, Team Roos, bro, relax. Hey, <laughs> I'm I'm here for I'm here for visiting some of those beers again. We've done a few, a few of those, and we're dipping our toes back in that area. And hell yeah. You know, don't forget where you came from, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a great episode, man. <laughs> Look, I like it. I know we uh, we always like, used to make fun of, like, you know, in, in Quebec, you know, like in Quebec, there's, like, a Roos, which yes, is, like, a, yes. this, the, I don't know, what would you call it? Yeah, it's, like, a red, yeah. I think it's an Irish red meets cream ale, I think, specifically. Yeah. Um, yeah. We always sort of joke off, if we're talking to a brewery about a collab, I'm like, let's do a Roos. I even pitched one last <laughs> night. And they were like, no. <laughs> I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> One day I'm going right. to get a Roos. I don't know. I feel like they are. I used to love them. That was my first favorite style, like back in the day, because it was what the first. What defines a Roos? Oh, a Roos, I believe, is an, Oh, flavor-wise? Yeah. I think it's no different than a, a, a typical red ale, what we would all call a red ale. 
um okay it's supposed to be a mashup of an irish red and the cream ale recipes if i'm if i'm remembering correctly maybe folks in quebec could could correct me on that but it's the i think it's a distinctly quebec style like well i I mean i would say if you basically picture a kilkenny it's uh, it's pretty much like that (laughs) Mm. all right like inherently, maybe, it's not a bad beer. It's just old maybe man fermented beer. with a lager yeast or something. Or probably, yeah. It was but like, like warm, but like poor temperature, poor temperature control. Yeah, probably like that. I know yeah. that the boreal roost was like the main thing, and when I was like yeah, learning about yeah. beer, like everything in 2012 when I moved to Quebec was fucking roosts everywhere, and a bunch, of, and a bunch of the Saint the Saint Ambrose ones, like the Griffin roost. Yeah, and oh, that was bad. Ooh, ooh, yeah, Griffin was bad. I drank a lot of I, like, I drank a lot of Griffin back in the day. Yeah, oh, <laughs> there's, uh, there's this little French um, French bar in in Ottawa, and they had Griffin and Griffin Red on tap, and mm. I was always hitting those. Yeah. <laughs> back you know yeah. back when the wallet wasn't as thick it's uh you know it, it, it was a good go-to it was easily if you go to the store it was probably the cheapest thing you could get yeah it's typically the griffin even cheaper than uh usually bell girl was everywhere bell girl that was one bell girl and boreal back in the day it was uh yes. an interesting time but yeah yeah so i feel like they are fronted on a little bit but this is this is fantastic bro this is like a perfect quintessential like Vienna and Nate and I like and I imagine you are too like we our favorite crispy I would argue and Nate I know I'm speaking for you but I think I'm correct is like a fest beer like at the yeah. the, the fall okay. fest beers there's literally nothing bad I could drink those year round so I find myself and I'd be curious if you guys feel the same I find myself if I had the optimal like run of a of a lineup of beers for a Friday Saturday night I'm drinking like six oh. beers over, over you know eight hours yeah. or something right I would love to start with a with a, like a Pilsner or something, yeah. Then go into like Vienna, Dunkel, even Schwarzbier, something like that, like a, a crispy light lager, then a dark lager, and then move on to you know IPAs and, and all the other stuff. This yeah. is the optimal thing for me. I don't see this style as a winter style at all. I think this is definitely year round. I don't care if it's thirty two degrees in July. I'm like, this is also what I want to drink. So I don't know about you boys. Is that something that you guys are? Feel that's kind of that's kind of where you know this is going with this beer it was initially like you know this is the beer that we want to drink after dark beer season is like really hit its stride you know when you've when you're craving a dark beer i feel like i want those in the winter time and coming in the spring we were like you know well, let's like lighten it up a little bit yeah um but one thing we've learned uh is people want an amber ale or an amber lager, just a red, a roof's colored beer all year. <laughs> so, you know, telling you, boys, if, yeah, it's team roost. We, out got, here. we got one. We'll give, <laughs> give the people what they want. So, um, year round. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, team I think Bruce. we're going to start trying to produce this one a little more, keeping it in rotation regularly. Dope. Yeah. yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. I'm, uh, I feel like it's like a night. It rounds out the profile a bit. Obviously, one of the beers we're going to get to uh, a bit later is kind of the more the, the darker one, which is a trendsetter of a beer too. But the this is like a cool in between. And you're right. It's like a and if it's coming into kind of like that late winter, early spring kind of vibe, which we're at night right now. Obviously, this is a obviously we're also this is kind of uh, I don't know if I've ever done this, but we're recording on the 29th of February, so once every four this years. Doesn't even Podcast. exist. It doesn't exist. <laughs> I mean, technically everything's fake, but this right, extra sure. doesn't exist. But it's life, yeah. But yeah, what? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should move. Should we get to a bit to philosophical boys? No, let's not do that. Let's, we'll, we'll wait till after beer six, and then we'll we'll get philosophical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. this is this is phenomenal, bro. I love this so much. So, okay, we've uh, given you the props. I just wanted to make sure because I, I never told you all that stuff about Stone City. I was it was, and I almost never realized it until we're sitting here right now about how impactful it was for me personally as a drinker and formed like a lot of the styles that I st- still enjoy to this day. And I, that's why I was like excited when I, I was first disappointed that you left. I'm like, fuck, but he's starting a brewery. Yes. Okay, cool. Everything's good in the world. Um, <laughs> so when you started Matron, this was 2018, 2019, probably, I guess, right? 20, 2018. That's when like, uh, you know, the, the wheels were in motion okay. and then we opened in 2019. Okay, so you had probably a year before everything went crazy? Yeah. 
Gotcha. Okay. So you were around the time. The only other brewery similar to you that I would put in that sort of approach to beer would be Godspeed in the atten- in the sense of like, you know, matron, fine beer. You are making like, you didn't do, I mean, you did your IPA, which we're going to drink soon, Janky, but that is, it's like this, your own version of that. Like you were sort of like, it was like at the time I would put you ahead of the trend. I feel like Godspeed was also ahead of the trend when they came. I think they came out in 2017 or 18 and it was all of the crispies and stuff hadn't really popped off to this level yet. And the level of like, it was like this sort of fine beer is the best way to describe it. Like, you know, like this thoughtful, uh, somewhat traditional approach, but with kind of like a modern twist that you kind of done to everything. You know, you've kept these local ingredients and you've got this interesting water profile and like you've done it so well, so, like that it's equally appealing to the traditionalist plus, you know, as, but pre, before Krispies became a part of the hype thing. Is yes. that, I don't know if I'm really making that point clear, but I, like, I feel if, like, no, I feel, I feel like you get it. <laughs> yeah. Like you're, you know, you, you get our approach to beer and, yeah. you know, like we, we don't want to make like whatever is just super trendy at the time. Like we'll always take our own approach to it and make it the way that we like it to drink. Right. And it's, it can be refined and it can be balanced and it still can be super flavorful and, and highly enjoyable and like experiential. Right. But, uh, um, yeah, like it's we just make the beer the way that we want to make it, <laughs> as opposed to how people say you should make it. I guess. Gotcha. Um, yeah, but I thanks for thanks for saying that. Like, uh, I it's nice to to talk with people when they really get what you do, and it seems like you guys really understand and appreciate our approach to beer. Oh yeah, dude, we've been big fans from the beginning, and it was like I must admit as well, I was a little late on the crispy train the when it when it was kind of i can't even remember how i got into it but once i really understood it because it was this it was always the thing where we all went through the color wheel in the beginning you start with domestic lagers and you move to european lagers and then you know the red ales and the roots and all that brown porter stout belgian this is back you know 10 plus years ago 12 years ago that all the kids these days aren't even getting to experience unfortunately for them then by the time you get through that um, hype arrived, and then you've got haze, and hey, oh no, pre hype, yeah. you're chasing the, the the IBU thing with with Westies. The IBU, got, the IBU wars, of IBU was, yeah, that was. <laughs> I feel like that lasted to probably 2015 ish, but mostly yeah. around 2012. You're right, yeah. And then you know, then I'd you went say to, around 2015, the haze started to creep. Took in. over. We okay. we started to play around at Stone City with uh with Oded IPAs. We made one called Hopline Bling. And, I had that. That was great. Yeah, and we did an American wheat ale uh, with with Nickelbrook, like uh, Ryan at Nickelbrook, and those were like, when I look back on it, those are like pre hazy hazies. Yes. Intentionally hazy beers with heavy amounts of adjuncts and hops in them. Which is amazing. And, uh, yeah, it was like yeah, crazy the the progression we've seen <laughs> since then has been, yeah. yeah totally bonkers yeah yeah i forgot about I, I that was the other thing i really enjoyed the stone city like labels names and stuff like that was like at the time like that was playing on the culture and, and everything which yeah, was yeah. super dope love um there's a lot of good puns to be had back then you know so, <laughs> so many back when <laughs> that was kind of yeah. the thing it, it worked well. it was the way to do it <laughs> oh it really yeah. was but then the Either way, the the crispy was sort of like it was once you sort of did all that, once you kind of got through the hype and you're obsessed with that for a bit, like you were saying, all you cared about was IPAs. You know, Nate, and, I don't know, Nate. I think you were the same as me. Like all I gave a shit about was that for for a bunch of time. Then once you discover crispies again, it's this beautiful like new appreciation because you had it before. And I'm looking at my reviews. I gave a bad review to Pilsner or Raquel. I thought it was kind of shit. To be fair to little old child me, like you're getting the can on some sort of ship that's probably sat warm on an LCBO shelf. So it's the, not the thing, but I didn't understand it. That's how little I, I always discussed it when that review came up like last week on the Facebook memory. So I'm like, Oh, so embarrassing. But <laughs> like, what, yeah. And also to be fair to you, Pilsner or Kel doesn't travel well. Yeah. It, like, like what we're like, what we're having here is not that like, like is not the best. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and that's why it's sort of a, totally yeah. Yeah, hard to sort of really judge it. But, you know, it, it all felt like when you're going through that and you go into the LCBO and you're like, all right, let me get 
this European lager and blah, blah, blah. And it's all kind of tastes the same. So once you've had that beer experience and understand, understood the, the breadth of what is available, then you come back to it and you're like, oh, this is what I want. And that's where I think a brewery like Matron really shines because you're delivering these styles that are so exquisitely done. And I feel like there's going to be people who just already like that stuff and that's cool. But then there's going to be people like me and it sounds like that the three of us actually that kind of came back into like in appreciating this. And now I'm like, oh, there's nothing in this world better than a Luca pour of a crispy. Oh, yeah. Nice, like nothing. Nice foamy lager. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> so it's like, it, it's super dope that you did that. Like, did that just come from just wanting, that's just where your palate was at the time? Or what was kind of the original thinking, being that you came from a brewery that was innovating at a high level as far as like crazy shit? And then coming into this brewery that's your own now and you're doing these really finely made, beautiful beers. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, when, when we were at Stone City, we got to make so many different beers. And um, our mandate was kind of like we make ales. And okay. I, I hate being put in a box for too long. So I was like, ah, I'm going to start making lagers. And then I wanted to, you know, mess around with some lagers. And uh, just I think we had it all wrong. Like we had such like a – we swung one way so hard we had to be so far against macro beers so we were going mm. like ipa crazy hops like we just forgot gotcha. about the lagers but having you know, traveled to germany and enjoyed so many of the the lagers in europe and we just had it so, like you know so wrong here is to our approach to lagers that i was like i want to start making like lagers like i drank when i was traveling so uh started playing around with that and uh and just kind of realized that it's so difficult to actually make good lager and that became a bit of a new like uh you know unlocked like a new obsession within brewing was like okay how do i make this better every time and there's like you know it's a slower process it's a little more methodical you need to pay such attention to detail and with a lot of the brewing i feel like i had been doing before it was you know, trying out a lot of different malts and a lot of different hops. And, uh, you know, you could take any ingredients in the world and put it together and make like a, a cool new beer. But with lagers, like it's, it's so process oriented and you're doing it with like almost so, so few ingredients. It's like, how can you make the most tasty expressive beer with the least amount of shit? And, uh, that's like, uh, yeah, just really, kind of fell in love with that concept um and i love the process of brewing like the things that get you to the point uh so lager brewing is like really really all about that and like that's kind of what uh what set me off on wanting to have it such a big part of what we do at matron mm. um yeah but uh it's, it's also like a little bit of an unexplored territory in craft beer because we got so into ales and like almost like British and then American influenced and Belgian influenced brewing that like you know, there's there's so much other like most of the world drinks Pilsner. So like let's, uh, let's explore that more. And I think craft beer in the last like 10 years has like really turned a corner on that and made some big strides in that. And there's tons of good lager out there now. It's a great point. Yeah, there was yeah, definitely... Maybe, maybe we grew into ourselves a bit, too. Like, at first, we were just trying to crank a beer out as soon as possible, and now you're like, okay, now I got some time. I got some tank space. Like, there's other breweries will be selling beer. We can lager some stuff. Yeah. 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 No, that makes sense. I like that. <laughs> I like that that's what you did. And, then, like, just to paint the picture of the place, um, it's in this beautiful town called Bloomfield in this super... Halfway between Picton and Wellington, if people know Prince Edward County. And it's a, it's a really dope space you got. You got a wicked outdoor. Uh, I think we came to see you in like the, one of the first times would have been September 2021, I think. Yeah. Uh, came, we, we came with Tiff's mum, I think, and you gave us a full tour and shit. And it was yeah. dope. Um, I always drag Tiff's mum around to breweries. She loves it now. 
and it's <laughs> it, it was cool just to like hang out there and see the the patio that's a real like cozy tap room as well and the the back it's such a big space you got there like as far as at the back of what you've got to work with um mm-hmm. that whole second half what was the second part again when you went through the hallway from the tap room uh we have like a just like a little seating area we call it the annex and there's okay. like some art and it's the entrance to our back patio now um the back patio that's what it was yeah. gotcha yeah which is super fire um and we talked tiff and i talk about it a lot like when you were showing you were like see those trees up there that's where the land goes and we're thinking about building that i was like that that's what being like an inspiration to us as far as like oh that's what we need that land justin's land that like i feel like we talk about it like every other month we're just like yeah <laughs> um it's super cool what you've got this like night this beautiful spot with like a dirt road so it's almost like de- destination arguably if i mean it's not that far off the main street it's like literally a minute but like you know it's it feels like you're away. going somewhere when you go down that yeah. road and it feels there, like oh like, you discovered something here. yeah <laughs> i got here and you yeah. got to, it's, it's like a cool space that you've got. I don't know if you want to speak to that a little bit more, but I just I find it like super welcoming and, and warm. I know you were saying, I think when we were there, we missed the food, but you had like a um, a food either, I can't remember, remember if the chef was like in, working for Matron or was an independent sort of separate thing. But yeah, yeah, do you want to just run through that? Like what you got going on? Yeah. Uh, I feel like uh, I fell in love with that property because of, of, you know, that exact same feeling like you come down this like janky little dirt road and then uh it's this nice like bucolic country property very like agrarian feeling and uh just surrounded by farmland and the building is old the building is very very rustic um on the outside like a lot of sheet metal and uh there's just kind of a good feel to it some rust around the edges it just feels like like wholesome or something like that (laughs) and we renovated the one side of the building over the course of a year to put in our like brewery and for some stroke of luck you know knock on wood we sit on top of like a nice nice aquifer that's got great water in it and that's actually like a really rare thing in the county there's you know despite being an island in the middle of the lake it's made of mostly limestone. So, uh, you know, there's not a lot of water and rock and we, we, yeah, right now we have a really nice well. So, um, it just kind of was, uh, serendipitous that we ended up in this place. Like, uh, our, our property right now has like a, a nice like front patio and back patio and, um, a, a very like, quaint tap room that's a nice juxtaposition from the outside it's like you know got some marble it's got like you know some very simply dressed plywood uh you know some clean clean wooden tables and like a nice bright uh can fridge as soon as you walk in it's kind of like the first thing you see is the cans in the fridge um yeah it's dope i love it that you've been you've been a couple times right I, I have been a few times. Yes. It, yeah. It's a, it, like, it's a really, it's a really nice place to be. It's, it's like cozy, but classy as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, that's the vibe we're going for, you know, cozy like, but uh, cozy, but classy. And almost like when you walk up a little unsuspecting. Yeah. Very oh, much yeah, so. for sure. Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't have a clue that it's like, that that's what's going on in there. And it's like you said, it's co- It's cool that it's off, you know, off that main street. And there's like, you know, it's so, I feel like it's like a how do you describe Bloomfield? It's like like really like big grand like older houses that are just like kept in yeah, got, great condition. A nice little like you know historic vibe to it. It's been around for a long time. A yeah, lot of like old houses. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it. Um, my my wife and I like go to the go to the county a lot for uh, just for like long weekends or like our cottage week vacations and whatnot and. Um, uh, Bloomfield is one of her pl- favorite places to go, like even just to like just to walk around in the summer, just because there's all of these like pretty old houses and shops and uh, th- th- like it's a very like picturesque uh, place yeah. to be. It's the heart of the county, it's the heart of the county. Yeah. That's what mm. I call it. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> I like that. That's exactly what it is. Um, yeah. yeah, man, it's it's super dope. Now, was the the fact that like 
Prince Edward County is such an interesting place to me. And if you look at like, say, Bloomfield and it, to me, sometimes I know there's a lot of like retirees out there and stuff like that. Um, how, like, how have people like, you know, under, like gravitated towards the brewery? Have they understood what you're doing? Um, like what's the general community vibe now that you've been there? I mean, it sounds like now, like six years, five years. No, uh, it'll be 2019, like five, five in the summertime. Yeah. Amazing. Like, yeah. What's yeah. the, um, how's the community embraced you guys? Yeah. I think, uh, we have a, a great community in Prince Edward County. Like, um, it is, you know, got a, you point out the retirees. There's mm -hmm. a bit of that for sure. Um, and definitely, I feel like there's a bit of a reputation in the county for being like a retirement place, but there's been a lot of like people who've grown up here who are very supportive and, you know, lived here all their lives and they right. love craft beer and, you know, support all the breweries around here. And then there's a lot of transplants too now, like people coming in from Toronto, people coming in from Ottawa, yeah. uh, people coming from like Kingston all over and stuff. So um, it's, it's definitely grown. Like there's, a lot more you know i think year-round people now and uh with that like there's there's been a, a lot more support too which is great um people have been really behind us around the community and um we get a good mix i think of locals throughout the year like people that live here now and uh and then like tourists in the summer like even all all summer long we still see uh like you know, familiar faces from around the county coming in, which is awesome. I think people in the county do a great job of, of getting out and like supporting their, their favorite establishments. Cause, uh, yeah, it's, it's a hard, it can be a hard go out here. Like it is, can be quite seasonally driven. So, mm. um, yeah, it's, it's good community. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. That's dope. And you are right. Sorry. I shouldn't have said the retiree thing. Cause we were considering <laughs> just like you, the transplants, like we, had yeah. a real estate agent looking at places for us. I think there's there. a lot of people like looking just for like a you know different life, you know, different life yeah. out here. Like you can almost kind of come out here and feel like you can, you know, do it on your own in, in a way, like uh, have a dream and like make it happen. And yeah. that's always kind of like fun and inspiring to be around. Um, and then sometimes you're like, man, am I just surrounded by crazy people just like me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's probably a good thing but, yeah but but it's it's cool yeah there's like a lot of very cool talented and smart creative people out here and uh it definitely makes for for a great great community that's dope yeah you're right mm -hmm. and I, I, that's what i saw about when i think about pc i always think of like potential because there was so much i feel like there was a lot of land that was like farmland but there was a lot of just kind of like empty blocks like you were telling us as yeah. well there's a lot of this came from the conversations with you because we didn't really get it and you were like literally across i think we're sitting out front having a beer having yes here actually and you were like yo see that field like right there you were like yo we, that like you you've talked to that farmer about if i'm not mistaken like that that land before like you know the people around you know what, who's selling stuff and like if they're not using it they can Oh, like, you know, they could sell parts to different people and stuff like that. Like, it's really like, there's so many things and there's so many undeveloped areas. Some of it needs yeah. to remain farmland, but you know, that's why there's like, what is it? 40 something wineries and however many breweries, like. Yeah, exactly. Like, 15 you know, eventually people want to probably cash in, cash in their land. I guess like if that's, that's the farmer's retirement plan is sell off some of their land. Um, so, you know, that opens up for people to do other stuff. Hopefully, hopefully they continue to, to run some cool farms out there. Cause that's one of the best things about the County is how many amazing little farms there are. Um, I don't want to see that stuff go away too quickly, but it's also amazing to see people turn, turn that land into like, uh, you know, like wineries and, and other like agricultural pursuits, I guess, you know, mm. but, uh, it takes it takes a lot of grit and it takes a lot of um you know like passion to do that stuff so when you get a lot of people out there that are like looking to get into that things it it makes things interesting that's for sure yeah yeah good point mm -hmm. those little like stalls on the side of the road are always so fire with the butter tarts and like fresh corn and like yeah oh, everyone's yeah. everyone's just doing something you know like yeah. it's uh 
you know, come, come this time of year, all the farmers, like you think they'd be like, you know, sitting around like waiting for, waiting for spring, but now they're like cranking out maple syrup right now. And on a warm day, they're on their tractors, like tilling the fields and stuff. It's sick. <laughs> awesome. I love that. Yeah, I even that remember there was a place up in like Wapoose and like yeah. there was a, you pull up and it was just like this. And this is, I guess, painting the picture for people who haven't been to Prince Edward County. It's like a little hut. You probably know what I'm talking about. And there's no one there. And they sell butter tarts. And you just got to put your money in the thing and then take it. Like, you could just go in there and take them. But, like, there's no one stopping. It's like a trust system. Just be like, yeah, Yeah. it's five bucks or whatever it is for a pack or ten bucks. And then you just put the money in and then take the, the tarts. It's like, it's so, it feels like from another bygone era type of thing you know it's like, it's true like i i love like i love that aspect of it it's like that's a community right like yeah. you know this is what i have to offer this is what i need in return and people understand that and and they show up for it mm. but uh but yeah the unfortunate thing you know sometimes with being a bit of a tourist destination is like people show up and don't respect that and like you know they that's they steal wild. money from it or they take stuff without it uh without paying like that's gross shit because then like it just ruins the good vibes of, of yeah. country living right yeah, that's kind of what drew me yeah. out here is like you know you have little farm stands and just like the access to like food and people doing like wholesome things um yeah but uh yeah. so you know keep Keep it honest. Coming out of the county, keep it honest. <laughs> keep it honest. I love that. Uh, I was trying to do a nice little segue about being honest and drinking beer, but uh, how are we feeling? <laughs> yeah, let's Should go for another one. one. Yeah, what I'll tell you. Here? Well, this is up to you, uh, Captain Justin. What are you thinking? Um, What's the vibes? Should we do a dark beer? Ooh. That's, yeah, let's that's, go no, for it. It's like the, the natural progression of the loggers here. Oh, yeah, let's these go. On these things. I like that. That's it. Yeah. Um, we, did say, it we, we did something similar when uh, when we had Third Moon on um, a few weeks ago, and like it seemed uh, counterintuitive to us at the, uh, at the start um, when Chris suggested it, but it really, really worked well to, uh, to kind of like divide things up um between uh, like between the loggers and the ipas so uh, like like learned a lesson from that one and we're and we're repeating it here it's don't be afraid to mix in a dark beer like in the middle of your Never. session <laughs> no yes. no it's always i mean like it's always a good time for a guinness right so <laughs> <laughs> oh, always a good time for a muff or is a good time for a muff. Yeah. Um, so this is called a dark beer. And from what I understand, I'll let you sort of explain it, but it's sort of like you, your take, like a unique take on dark beer, as opposed to being some sort of pre-recognized style. Dark B-I-E-R, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. So we were kind of like borrowing the uh, the beer from uh, the B-I-E-R from like lager beer. And our mm-hmm. approach to that was like, you know, this is this is how we make a dark beer, you know, like it's not stylistically, you know, fits in anything perfectly, but, uh, this is our answer for a dark beer. So we, it's not a stout, not a lager necessarily. Not not a stout, a it's, not, it's not a porter. It's not a Schwartz beer. It's not a dark lager. It's, it's not a brown, you know, it's, it's a dark Something. beer. <laughs> it's a dark beer. It's a dark yeah, beer. It, yeah, I, effectively, you know, if I had to categorize it as something in like some predefined boxes, I would maybe say that it is a lagered stout. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of a, it's like a stout recipe, I guess, and then mm. we ferment it with our lager yeast at a medium temperature, like a uh, the like high end of a lager temperature, but not. Like not like cold IPA, not like warm fermentation of a lager temperature. Gotcha. We got to pass yeah, on so some it's... props to you because um, yes. when we had because uh, we had flux brewing on uh, back in the fall, and one of the beers that we had um, on, on the pod with them was uh, was a dark beer, which was really really good, and uh, and they shouted you out saying that it was inspired by uh, Muff. <laughs> That's awesome! Oh, that makes me—that makes me smile. 
changing yeah. the game. I just noticed the gold lid on this too. Classy. Oh, yeah. Look at that. The muff coming yeah. in classy. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I love that. The small touches. What's the name from? Because in Australia, this is slang for something that you wouldn't <laughs> call a beer. Is that translate here? Uh, I think to a certain generation it does. Are you yeah, trying to say I'm old? So. Which... Are you saying I'm old? <laughs> no, 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 but... <laughs> Boomers always make jokes about that. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. So but it's a thing over us, here too. Yeah, yeah. For okay, us, okay. For, there's a there's a double entendre to it, okay. which like uh, you know we'll we'll can we can converse about that. Um, <laughs> we wanted to name it something that was like like cozy. It was our winter beer, so a muff mm. is like a hand warmer, a little tubular hand warmer that's got gotcha. fur in it. And you like put your hands in a little fur muff, and so we had that on our like maybe list of names for it and i was like well we can't call it that <laughs> and i think that may have like spurred on jess and mallory of like, like yeah, yeah let's we call can it that. call it whatever we want like we, we'll call it that and i was like okay all right like you know if you guys insist and then I was like, let's think about it though. I was going to a trip. Uh, I was going to like Germany and France to do some some beer stuff in September of 2019, and uh, and I went to this beer festival. It was a wine festival, sorry. It was like the Oktoberfest of wine, and there was like oh, I heard about all these that. little vendors. Uh, it was in Bad Durkheim, and there was like there was all these vendors, and one of them had a stall that was like 15 feet tall. And it was selling nothing but fur muffs. Like, it was just, <laughs> there's like thousands of them. And so I took a picture of it and I sent it to Mallory and Jess. And I was like, I think this is a sign that we need to call this beer muff. So, you know, they were like, yes, all right, we're doing it. <laughs> that's awesome. Yes. That's, that's, what, that's what we needed. That was the, you know, the, the last straw, I guess. There. <laughs> and, uh, I love it. Yeah, they... They called the beer muff, and it, this was very much like a very collaborative beer. The way that we made it, and like mm -hmm. you know, we we didn't. Uh, everyone kind of talked about like what they enjoyed about dark beers, and like what they liked in dark beers, and how uh, they wanted the dark beer to taste. So instead of like picking a style, we kind of worked as a team to just like design a beer around exactly what we wanted, and. Uh, and yeah, that's how this one came out. Um, so yeah, there's, that was like, and it's crazy because we've never really changed the recipe too much from the first batch. Like you made it and we we're like, this is, this is exactly how we wanted it. Like maybe like a little tiny tweak here and there, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it hasn't deviated very much from the original recipe. That's great. Mm -hmm. And it's only 4.5% which is yeah. uh, which is awesome and once again just like kind of with the vienna the other thing that i'm finding myself uh, always wanting is a low abv sort of between four and six a beer this is exactly what i find myself craving that doesn't seem to be as incredibly common like at the mm -hmm. end of the night once i've had the crispies and i've had some uh ipas or whatever i like to wrap up with something like this like a low abv stout that just sort of like almost like a dessert in the can so you don't have to stop you from yeah. when you're a little bit lit and trying to eat some some garbage <laughs> which is obviously fine too but then this kind of scratches the itch for me and it's cool. um i love this i think it's like a lagered stout is a cool way to think of this, this yeah is, i guess that's like, cool if uh if i was like submitting to uh an awards application and they were like had a lagered stout category I'd be, oh this is the beer to put into this it <laughs> It makes sense. I never would have thought of that. And I'm getting that same level of minerality in this too, which is awesome. So I'm noticing that like, you know, consecutive sort of like little consistency yeah. between it all, which is, which is great from the, from the water. Mm -hmm. Um, a little bit, of, a little bit of saltiness in the water, you know, makes, yep. makes everything taste better, you know, for sure. Yeah. And that like the nose is just straight chocolate with, um, mm -hmm. a bit yeah. of kind of like espresso or cold brew or something in it. Um, it's got some real great, Super dry. Um, honestly, the nose is spectacular. So we didn't really do the tasting notes. We we're all just fucking slamming this thing. Um, <laughs> it's just, it's beautiful. It's like I ha I've, I've had this a bunch of times, and it's in the LCBO too. Yeah, this one's in the yeah. LCBO right now. Ooh. 
yeah, winter, you can grab your muffin the LCBO. Love to see it. Um, but yeah, yeah, great chocolatey vibe, sort of like light, sort of coffee. Um, super balanced, very smooth. Touch bitter, like kind of like that dark chocolate bitterness. It's uh, it's fantastic. Yep. I love yeah, it. Thanks. I like that you also had this. Like, I feel like it was almost kind of ballsy to just be like, "I'm not going to stick to a style. Like, I'm just going to do this thing and call it this dark beer." And it's just kind of like, whatever. You get it. It's beer. It's dark. Boom. <laughs> I, I know. I like that. I feel like it's uncommon. Thanks, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, like our approach to it was like, like uh, a dark beer. We're we are only going to make. We, we primarily make lagers, IPAs, and farmhouse sales. So a dark beer deviated quite a bit from that path. How do we make gotcha. it fit? You know, it technically is a lager, so it fits into that uh, that category. We use our lager yeast for it. Um, and dark beer drinkers, like, don't care really what style it is. They want a dark beer, and it's, mm-hmm. like, 45 degrees outside. And they're like, I'll take a dark beer. It's, you know, minus 45, and they're like, I'll take a dark beer. So <laughs> uh, we're, like, kind of being a little cheeky about it in a way. And, and honestly, like, also, like, Pilsner was not created by following a, you know, a fitting into a box of what everything else was at the time. So, right. you know, we kind of were just like, once you free your mind of what, what beer is, then you can truly create. <laughs> and uh, we just designed a beer around what we wanted to taste and less around like, what is that style? How do we hit that, you know, style note of a stout or whatever, but um, yeah, it's got some, it's got some dark malts in there. It's got some Munich malt in there. It's got some oats and some like barley in there. And, uh, and then we fermented it a little bit medium warm with a lager yeast. Like you tell me what style that is. Yeah. It's, it's a dark beer. It's a there damn dark beer. No, I love it. <laughs> how, how's she going at the LCBO for the winter season? I imagine it's uh kind of perfect timing for that. And also short can. So it's, uh. I feel like they must move a little faster. The short cans, unfortunately, no. no they don't. It's, uh, it, it's I thought it was battle. Huh. Yeah, yeah. We uh, it's the it's going pretty well. I'd say like uh, we didn't expect it to be like a a huge seller, mm-hmm. um, but it's been doing pretty good, and I think uh, okay. people have been like responding well to the beer, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, short cans though. <sighs> yeah, I I fucking love short cans. It's just like best. a nice, Us a too. nice size beer, but uh, the LCBO and I feel like a majority of the consumer base wants a tall can. Mm-hmm. So the LCBO really does. Yeah, yeah, and honestly, like we've kind of fought against that for a long time, and uh, we want to, we want to succeed, and we want to do well, and we want to sell beer. So we're we're switching some of our lcbo products to tall cans really oh really which yeah. brands uh we're gonna put janky in a tall can okay um that's like our first our first move and then we have a uh, summer listing for Deese, which is like our our summer ipa like lower alcohol a little more tropical ipa and that'll be what's it called can too. Deese. Deese. d-w-e-c-e D- right yeah yeah I th- have i had that if i haven't I have it. It's like our summer our summer IPA that we do. It's like an orange nice little orange can. It's like bright. Uh got a got a nice dryness to it. It's like hazy Uh and super tropical, but like like a nice crisp dry finish. Like full body still. Okay. That's dope. I'm trying I'm finding it now to see what she looks like. Ah, okay, I see. Okay. Um that's wicked. So the tall cans, eh? Because like, look, because like, sort of, we're all saying here, like, I always just thought, like, I more often than not, I would like to sort of go volume and try a whole bunch of different things in the beer session, and the easiest way to do that is to have short cans. So yeah. I would drink literally everything in a short can. I don't think there's anything I necessarily need in a tall can, but. I have heard a Nate. We must have had someone on the pod saying this. Uh, now, now you mentioned it, Justin, but like the some. I thought it was style dependent. So, like, it makes sense that you're doing an IPA in a um and janky, like the two IPAs actually in tall cans. Mm-hmm. That makes sense because that seems what the market wants. Maybe it was Third Moon was saying about because they put like a thirteen point five percent IPA in a full tall can, not like a shorty or the Red Bull can. I'm like, who the fuck yeah. wants? 
what's wrong with people? And they said whenever they put anything really big in a smaller can, people get mad. I'm like, interesting. Really? So that's like a yeah, which Weird. yeah, I thought right, that was like, a little... what, whereas and interestingly, like the higher the ABV, like I, the the smaller the, I'd say the smaller the, the can. Yeah, yeah, you know? like, yeah like, like the smaller packaging is what I want. But then <laughs> yeah, but like but then what it like what it seems to turn out is that like the lower ABV like seems to be more of a draw and like in a smaller can in some specific cases because it, it's like. <laughs> You know, you know, if you're thinking cottage Maybe beer, so if you're like, if you like, if you're by the lake, you know, like that's when you've got like a six pack of, uh, like, you know, a six pack of Yesay or kind of, like kind of thing yeah. is the cottage crusher. Yeah. yeah, interesting. I I would agree. I would tend to agree in that regard. Like. I mean, yeah, I just want everything in a short can, but maybe the big can is better for sharing. Yeah, perhaps? I think that's that. And and some people sharing like is sharing is definitely caring. It's a fact. It doesn't rhyme for no reason. <laughs> there's something yeah I, I get it i definitely get it i think some people might be i, I guess it's just that everyone has their kind of preference maybe some people maybe short can doesn't yeah. scratch the itch enough for people and yeah and, and some, some people just folks... want a bigger beer you know That's yeah. yeah um there's the perceived value i think to a larger can great point perceived yeah that is a, th- th- that is a thing like um Ah, yeah, th- th- this is a conversation that comes up a lot, and uh, like, and something that I see come up a lot with certain characters, uh, uh, like in the scene on Instagram and whatnot. Um, characters, I like. But that. The, like the, <laughs> the, the, well, like the, the ones who are like who are very into um, high ABV beers. For some reason, like for for some reason, they're resistant to them being put in smaller packages, and it comes down to a, like to a really what strikes me as minuscule kind of uh, like kind of pricing thing, because uh, because again, like, like 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 we were saying, uh, the, like you know, when it's a higher ABV beer, I prefer it to be in a smaller package because mm. I want it to be. Because uh, I want it to be Single less of serving. a commitment, le- yeah. like less of a commitment sure. to, uh, to to get into. Like if it's in, yeah. like if it's in what, uh, like one of these, or if it's in one of Third Moon's uh, like silver bullet cans or whatnot, like that's a lot less intimidating than a fucking seven fifty mil bottle or uh, yeah. or a tall boy of thirteen and a half percent quintuple IPA, but. <laughs> Um, it, but drink then it. it's a but Just then drink it, yeah. it fresh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, geez. Um, yeah. But then it's the thing that, like, as soon as the as soon as the size goes down, I guess if you're watching the like, like if you're watching the price on it, when it starts to become a uh, the, the, like a dollar per volume uh, like kind of thing, like I don't buy beer that way. Um, and I, like, and I kind of wish that that like, like that the conversation didn't have like, like didn't have to be that nitty gritty on a dollar per volume basis. But like, I prefer it to more be a what's more sensible for the like for the ABV kind of thing personally. But I know, but like, I can't expect the entire market to buy beer the the exact same way I do. It's just an interesting uh, conversation to watch. Yeah, yeah. Right, Justin, you're muted, bro. Sorry, that's, a, I, that's uh, right. My dog was coming through. She, <laughs> hey man, don't sweat it. <laughs> She's uh, just trying to get at her her water dish right now. I respect it. She can make all yeah. the noise she likes. This is a dog friendly podcast. Oh, she's, she's old. an old girl. See, yeah, give like, her all the grace bald. she needs. Yeah, she's uh, she's been through all of it, you know. <laughs> she's done it all. She's uh, I wonder what her preference is. Yeah, uh, she like she um, seems like a tall can kind of girl. Yeah, her name's <laughs> London. Her name's London. London, so I feel like she's a uh, like you know like nice, like a nice hand pulled bitter. Yeah, it's just like a real yeah. like minimal head and just no carbonation, just fucking oh, no, flat she's, at she's, like room temp. She's team foam, team foam all day. Sparkler, oh, she likes the foam. Sparkler on, yeah, oh. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a club. Um, <laughs> We're foam in this house. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah. I, I would tend to agree with the like the sizing format, like yeah. You know, Bigger ABV, smaller can. Like uh, you can bust out one of those little tiny two fifty uh, yep. short cans. Those things the, are cool. But, the eight uh, ounce ones. But yeah, I I think the less of a commitment thing is nice. Like we've always packaged in short cans. Uh, I I do feel a little like weird about going to a tall can, but you know people enjoy the tall can format, especially for IPAs and stuff. So yeah, that's know. true. Yeah, if if sometimes if sales, you yeah. gotta listen to your customer and, and what they want, and 
if yep. it's going to help us do better business in the LCBO, like that's the the game we got to play here. So I'm not yeah. opposed to I'm not opposed to doing that. The uh, I, I remember one large format uh, matron beer that I had from my like from my very first visit there was one that I shared with Craig um, uh, going back a few years must have been like 2018 something like that it was a 750 mil bottle of um, that, the uh, like, uh, that, that yes that like fresh hop farmhouse beer I'm, the, the uh, name yes. of it is escaping me right now but uh, fourth right. Fourth yeah, ride. that's the one. That's yes, the one. bro. I rem- yo, that was in Montreal. You brought it back to the crib, and we did that's one right. of the- that's that. That right. was episode one fifty nine, I think, that night of the last podcast. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That was interesting. What was the deal with the um the bottles? Because I, the if bo- I'm not mistaken, was that particular version i'm just checking i'm looking at untapped here to see if i could find that if there was two different things because i think it was it the same that has beer? been canned since then i think yeah and i've had it in the can i've had this four times it says and i think can 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 model the first time was the model that was february 2020 right before wow 29th of february 2020 right before shit wow hit the <laughs> Do you know what it was it was today 2020 actually and that was Holy because shit. we did the montreal vlog part two with the beer that's bus right. thing today because right. yeah. it came up in my facebook that's memories crazy. yeah so anywhere way i remember anything is beer photos in facebook memories <laughs> otherwise i have no <laughs> idea what i did with my life so is it the same beer in the i guess two questions one is it the same beer from back in 2020 in the in the large format to maybe what it is now in the cans and two uh why the change uh pandemic basically. people wanted small cans yeah we couldn't we couldn't ship uh couldn't ship bottles gotcha, as easily gotcha, and like we gotcha, had boxes gotcha, gotcha. for for cans so but not that uh makes sense. yeah we just when we brewed it again i was like well i guess we'll just put it in a can now um the first one we did bottle conditioned and then after that we just like yeah did more or less can or tank tank conditioned as much as we could and then topped up the carb like with the carb stone um not as naturally but uh but yeah it was kind of a, it's like a like a fresh saison sort of thing like these are our house saison yeast for it and uh, it would be a, a fresh hopped ale in that regard gotcha. um and yeah initially we were like okay we want to do more bottle condition stuff and that was kind of the direction we started with but then just you know with the, all the crazy shit going on it didn't make sense to keep doing that right now so uh yeah. we still still can rule it out for us but uh we've bought a canning line so we've like really invested in in canning technology in our brewery so less inclined to bottle think us right now makes sense yeah. I feel like almost every style now is comfortably in cans. Like it's, you know how before it was like, if you had like a special, like whatever barrel age Imperial stout, you get that shit in a can. If you have something like this farmhouse, sale we're talking about like forthright, like this sort of, you know, really nice, like exquisite, the support, you know, the experience where you're twisting off the fucking thing and the cork and all that, like in a can is fine. I don't think anybody has these like, pretense and i feel like at the end of the day though it's come the pandemic i think unintentionally i guess changed drinking patterns as far as probably all of us have a seller because we went and bought these 750s in excitement and then covid happens and we're like oh we can't i'm not drinking this i'm supposed to share this with people like right <laughs> yeah and then all oh of my a God, sudden my seller is like probably so old and <laughs> yeah pandemic once right again. i know right yeah. that's uh you gotta so like many time. bottles i wanted to share so what, so many so what you're saying so what you're saying here <laughs> Craig, is that we need to start seeing lambic in a can we need to start seeing <laughs> like uh yeah. seeing like like dre fontaine in a can you know jim what's really funny i know you're making fun but rodenbach <laughs> can rodenbach can, oh yeah classic. yeah yeah no that's true that's true and i hadn't thought of that i had do you know what i bought a can at the lcbo and i've still got a bottle of the classic uh in the cellar and i wanted to do a side by side but that's a 750 plus it was a real 500 mil can not the 473 tall boys like it's a real yeah, i'm like that's can. like a nearly a like a 1.25 liters of the same beer for me in one <laughs> and i was like sour, sour beer 
yeah, my uh, I'd be like living on Tums. Like I'm like, yeah, it's not happening. <laughs> I just want to see. I wanted to see if there was a difference. I don't like. I don't know if there is, but I don't know. So many. Um, like I think there is something to having the the bottles for something for sure. Like, but once again, if they're bigger ABV, I like. Uh, we're all obviously we're all agreeing here that the smaller format is uh superior. You can get you know three seventy five mil bottles that are cute and like. Enough, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah, the, at this at this stage of my life, I like a smaller format. But I feel like back in the day, you know, when I was younger, everyone was having dinner parties and drinking together and sharing stuff. It was nice to show up. Seven fifty was perfect. Yeah, you know, seven fifty and pour one out. But uh, but yeah, this different uh, times. Uh, different times, different times to this stage. Yeah, the can the can is great. The beers that I want to drink right now too, like they they go better in a can. I think I one point I wanted to do more of the like you know, barrel aging and and sour beer stuff and mm-hmm. right now my my taste is a little a little more like simple than that you know love a lager love a, a, a well-balanced IPA a saison you know the way that we do it we kind of like almost like do like a hybrid between a pale ale and a saison and uh, mm-hmm. and that's like it holds up good in the can. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I feel like it didn't feel, well, I guess all that to say exactly that, that, you know, having the first time forthright in a bottle, loved it. Then the other three times in a can, loved it equally. So I, I didn't take away from the experience of that beer, having it in a can. So, it's, and yeah. I think the market is used to it. I guess, you know, all of us can say whatever, but I think the market is used to that at this point. Even yeah. if you're looking at something like Rodenbach, which typically is an absurd thing because it's a 200 plus year old brewery to have in a can, yeah. and we're making fun, but they did it. And they why did, did Rodenbach do it? That means what? Well, because of COVID, wouldn't be yeah, surprised. Glass, Probably glass was expensive and hard to move. Right. You know, it's good just point. Being, being uh, eco conscious, the can. It's the smart. Superior, superior packaging vessel. And it almost, you're right. And it almost seems almost ridiculous for that, like a five-ish percent beer to be in this big ass 750, which yeah. I'll happily take to the face. That's no problem. But like, you know, it's like why you could have it in a more, you know, reasonable format. So it's, uh, yeah, I don't think that's a problem. And if you've got all of your styles work perfect in a can, I don't think it doesn't matter anything you do. I think it'd be, um, it'd be fire. And you've got the canning line, so you, you know. You know what? Uh, you know what is a nice treat though. Sometimes is is drinking okay. a beer out of a three hundred and thirty mil bottle. Mm. Yeah, you know that's true. When was the last time you drank a beer out of a bottle? I think I, I had to. I, I, I can t- I can tell you. I can tell you for sure. The last time I had uh, a beer out of a three hundred and thirty mil bottle was uh, Pesce Mortel. Oh, did okay. you drink? When you're saying drink it from the bottle, do you oh, mean I, oh, like, okay, like okay, right no, out of the bottle? I, no, right no, right I, 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 I didn't. I didn't like neck it right from the. Yeah, I was gonna right say, all right, Nate. Right, no, no, okay. no, no, psycho. No, that, no, that would be a, no, that would be a different thing. But uh, <laughs> like no, a Miller High Life or something. Yeah, like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. No, no, you're yeah, you're talking about something different there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had um. There's something we went, like kinetically, just like like a muscle memory. It's like something nice about it, you know. You know what? You're fucking so right, dude. We went to Steam Whistle at some point. I think we went mm. to the Beyonce show last. We went to somewhere last year. And then we went. I took Tiff and my mother-in-law. And we were walking back from somewhere. And we were going past the Steam Whistle. So we went there. had some food. And for I don't know why. But they came up to the table. And they gave us two six-packs of glass bottles. They didn't know about BOS. It was just the server. Because sometimes it's BOS. They know what's up. But like, they just like, here. I don't know. Maybe because it was the end of the night. Or we were nice to them. Or some shit. So... I took one of them home. I just keep them in the fridge. And I know, I think I cracked one over Christmas and drank it from the bottle. And I'm like, I think I went to shower with it too. And I was like, oh, this is magic. <laughs> well, power I for- shower. <laughs> yeah, you know the vibes. Like, it was, it was. Back, take you back 15 years. That's what I mean, yo. Yeah, like, it's yeah. like we're back to the early 20s or something. Oh, 15 years for me, early 20s. Oh. Years. Not quite a little more than that. But like, <laughs> just smashing those bottles was, was you're right. Like, and isn't I, that I, what? Um, and isn't that what Jeff um, from town was talking about with like the smashing, stubbies, like, like smashing Miller High Life in his driveway or that like, kind of thing? It's exactly what he talked about. And I had a Miller High Life not long after he said that. And I'm like, that shit is garbage. I could not do it. It's just like sweet little <laughs> sticky water. But the steam whistle was lovely in a bottle, like because mm. it, it was a nice Canadian mic, you know, 
craft yeah. beer. Um, I, I tried to, I don't know, it just wasn't for me. But I just, yeah, the experience was exactly that, though. Like, sitting in your driveway, just having a casual fucking, you know, bottle and cracking it open, not worrying about a can, a, a glass pour, which obviously is, like, superior. But there is, like you said, Justin, muscle memory. That's a, like... Raw drinking Corona, whatever the fuck it is back in there. I never poured a beer out of a bottle. Yo, I did the, the 365, the stupid photos. I think for the first, like, like two, three, four years, I didn't, I didn't like, pour anything out. I just drank. I, I, I remember drinking Super Collider from Flying Monkeys, which was a 10% IPA from the bottle. Like, oh, and I did, what's the other one? Pumpkin from Southern Tier. You know, the Ooh. insane, but I didn't share it. I had the whole thing from the bottle. <laughs> Is that in a bomber too? Yes, dude, 750. And I had, um, yeah. what's the other joints? We went to Detroit and me and Scott, my old co-host, we got a uh, uh, um, Jolly Pump, Jolly. Jolly Pumpkin? It is Jolly Pumpkin. We didn't yeah. know they were sour. We thought they were off. So we came oh. back and we're drinking them and we didn't split. Oh, we just all got the exactly. same beers and we're sitting there together drinking the same beers instead of like we spent twice the money and we're drinking them from the bottom. I'm like, oh, this is a brown now. Why does it taste fucking sour? What's going on? So like, yeah, I think there is muscle memory in that. Is that I didn't even consider pouring it into a glass and I don't I know why. Some of my, I think some of my earliest beer drinking experiences – were drinking from like a large format bottle, like a quart of fifty, or like like uh, Unibrew Molson Dry, or oh, something yeah. like that, or yeah. like a Unibrew or something, or like yeah, ten percent weird Radler, yeah, yeah, like the like the with, with the huge screw like screw top, uh, yeah. Like, yeah, 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 tornado, <laughs> tornado like, or something, yeah, yeah, like. The, the ones that they, the, the ones that they've just got stacks of at the, uh, like at the depths, sitting warm in the window, Ugh. just heating mm. up. What do they call them? A key? Q U A I? I think they call them a key in Quebec. Of the um, what's the fucking beer? Laurentide, which is basically a rebranded like Canadian, I think. Mm. You know? Oh, they taught me about this stuff. It's fucked up. There's some bad, bad, bad beer. Um, <laughs> speaking of the opposite of bad beer. What are we up to next, fellas? Are we doing janks? Janky? Let's do a janky. Jank it up. Time for janky. This beer Probably is a classic. Tempered to a nice temperature now. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Do a so, little a, a gentleman's rinse. I only have one glass here. Oh, uh, oh yeah, you have one? I like a gentleman's rinse. <laughs> 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 I haven't heard that's that. Going, that's, that awesome. that's going on the list. <laughs> yeah, add that on, Nate. You know the vibes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is a six percent IPA. Um, how would you describe this particular IPA, dude? Like, is this like I feel like this? If I would uh, hazard a guess, I would say like sort of like an East meets West type of thing, as far as the approach, or is that uh, not a fair assessment? Uh, yeah, no, I think that's a fair assessment. Um, more East than yeah, West, we just... but I feel like it's got a little bit of a bite and stuff to it. Yeah, like our, our, we definitely appreciate the, uh, the East Coast and all that it has done for IPAs. But again, don't forget where you came from and, and West Coast IPAs were, uh, what made us like love IPAs in the first place. So. There's like a nice balanced bitterness to it. It's not super soft or like, you know, there's still a present bitterness that makes mm -hmm. it refreshing and, uh, and crisp, but it is still highly aromatic. It's hopped heavily in the late end. And uh, we use like an East Coast yeast in it. Um, and yeah, but like our, our water profile also adds like a, a nice little minerality to it. So it like finishes like nice and dry. Um, Dude, this nose is insane. Yeah, I haven't this had this new, for. This... Yeah, this new batch is like killer. Fire. <laughs> oh, I haven't had this beer in like stuff. since 2021. Yeah. That's embarrassing. Yeah, we had to we had to dump a batch over uh, January, which was uh, like one of the most difficult things I've ever had to do. I think, but oh, no. uh, what happened? Yeah, just was, no. wasn't that um, wasn't great timing. No, no, just, terrible. Just timing. wasn't wasn't right you know like uh i think uh i think something just happened with the fermentation on it we had a power outage um during the fermentation because there's like a windstorm here and i don't know 
just didn't taste right. Didn't look right. Took a while to to take off, and we decided to dump the batch and brew another one. And we'd been like talking about and discussing some changes that we wanted to make to the beer, and we're just like, let's just do it right now. And the the results were excellent. <laughs> so hell yeah. yeah. Well, I'm pretty stoked about it, gentlemen. Get that in you. This the yeah. nose is impeccable. Cheers. Mm. Cheers. Oh hell yeah! Did, could you? What what are the hops in this? Um, we oh. use locally grown Chinook, but there's there's a very little bit left of that, mm. um, and mm. uh, a little bit of locally grown Cascade, and then some Citra and Mosaic. So a little okay. bit of the old school and local stuff, and then a little bit of the new school, you know, the the modern, what you've come to grow and love in IPA. Gotcha. <laughs> That's uh, spectacular. I can see the citron mosaic. That's um, definitely coming through. It's like with that touch, it's like mostly east, and you're kind of right. Like the Chinook probably is delivering that little bit of pine maybe like citrus pith in there. Whereas Ooh, I yeah. guess the rest is sort of like giving it that tropical punch. Like it's definitely more East than West, but mm-hmm. oh, the nose was just like, as soon as it cracked a can, it was like, geez. But it's also not like, it's also definitely not full East either though. Like it's good. No, like it, exactly. it's fully, it's fully got West vibes. The last, um, the last time I had this, which was the first time in a while. And, and uh, Justin and I were chatting mm-hmm. about this was, I, I had it on tap at the third and that was the first, like, and that was the first time I'd had it in a minute. I'm like, holy was that? fuck, this is a good beer. This, this was just like a month ago. Was it? Was this the same batch, or this probably would have been the batch before? Uh, this th- this uh, would have been the previous batch, I think. Previous. Yeah. Oh yeah, because yeah, we moved this pod mm-hmm. anyway, which actually coincided with um, the batch because it was wasn't going to be ready in time, which actually worked out fantastic. Because yeah. we wanted to make sure we had this beer on this pod. We could not do a matron pod without this beer. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Can't do we can't do the matron podcast without uh, without janky on it. Bit, bit of jank in it. This is yeah. yeah, man. This is crazy. I can definitely understand why this one will be the the flagship. It's a, it's like it's. I think it's a dope take on a New England. It's like it's it, it, the tweak isn't even that massive, but it's an, it's different enough to most of the other things that are out there that it's like it stands out. Thanks. It's yeah. and it's the mouthfeel is is fantastic. I imagine there's a bunch of oats in oats, there with this. Oats and wheat, you know, multi multi grain uh, oh. approach to it, and uh, yeah, like is basically we just wanted to make the IPA mm. that we wanted to drink, like our favorite things about IPAs. So um, right. yeah, like nice and aromatic and flavorful, a lot of like fresh juicy hops in there, and then. Uh, let the yeast be a little expressive, but like still have some bitterness to like keep coming you keep coming back for more. That was kind of like my my hang up with some of the more um, I'm gonna say like east, but like southeastern IPAs like coming out of Massachusetts and stuff that were inspiring people were like they weren't bitter enough. You know, it was like mm. too, too sweet. Yeah. Whereas Vermont, I really like the Vermont IPAs, the Eddie Toppers and um you know that which the are ve- which are very very different yes. yeah yeah and like they had like the big saturated hop flavor but also like there was still this like like bitterness that like was almost like gripping in a way like it made you want to keep going back to it um yeah so i'd i'd say like if we were going to put it in the east coast it'd be like more vermont inspired than anything that makes sense yeah. yeah, now you're actually mentioning it. I had Hedy not too long ago, and it was... Um, I can see what you mean as far as the Vermont IPA, which is sort of juicier than I remembered, because I hadn't had them for... I hadn't been to Vermont in forever. And when we went out there, I was like, all right, let me get as much of this as I can. And uh, yeah, you can definitely tell the influences from this are more Vermont IPA than that sort of like not all of the Massachusetts stuff is super sweet there definitely is like the treehouse stuff is definitely a little more on the citrusy kind of thing which dials it down maybe more trilliums a little more on that sort of sweeter side but this is like yeah and I like that like a night that makes a lot of sense though a nice nod to to the region of Vinceburg yeah um was this an immediate hit 
when you uh, dropped this? Or was this a bit of a slow burner for people to kind of uh, get into it? It it was it took off quickly. Yeah. Mm. Um, Good. It's, I think, been our best-selling beer since the moment we released it. And, uh, yeah, it's it's janky. It goes well. <laughs> Where'd the name come yeah. from? <laughs> the road? Uh, the, uh, yeah, I mean, like, the it's kind of inspired by the property, I guess. Like, when we saw the building initially, you're like, it's kind of janky, you know? But, uh <laughs> And there was there was like five minutes where we were like, should we call the brewery janky? And oh, like, oh, we can't call the brewery janky. Like, no, that's too that's, much. It's too much. It's too much. <laughs> no one will take us. No one will take us seriously at all. No. <laughs> uh, so, um, the the concept behind the beer too was like we were working with uh, Pleasant Valley hops, and so like you know year to year crop to crop things will change a little bit so the concept was like you know this beer might change you know over the course of time but uh it will always be delicious and you know we'll work with the hops that we have and, and make a delicious beer regardless so um love it it might be a little it might be a little janky but uh but yeah that's it's really anything but we spend so much time like tasting this beer and, and so much care into like making sure that this beer tastes good that uh that it's far from janky could not agree yeah. more that's dope and actually just i did forget to ask in the beginning where did the name of the brewery come from in the end from matron well my two yeah. business partners mallory and jess uh they have been in the beer industry for a very long time and um you know we wanted to have a a name that was like reflective of the fact that we have, you know, a majority of Two-third. female ownership in the brewery and, uh, that it was, it was strong yet feminine and had like, you know, kind of like appeal to, to all beer drinkers. So, um, yeah, we came across like matron as a word, which was like a little bit maternal, like, you know, like kind of, uh, evokes like, you know, feeling of like taking care of people, taking care of, uh, uh, the community and stuff so that's that's what we we settled on we really like that name and that kind of feel for it and you know writing it out and spelling it out we're like this is like a, a strong name so mm. uh, that's how we settled on matron and there was like a bit of a double you know another double meaning to it like you can be referred to as matronly as a woman which is like it means like like a sober old lady and we thought that was like kind of funny being like a, a beer a brand, brand. <laughs> you know, we were like, we're, we'll give it a new meaning, you know? So I like that. Um, yeah, that was kind of where the name came from. And then the fine mm-hmm. beer was that the, was that I like, most people don't do that. And that's why I'm sort of asking about that. Like adding that on to the end, it was like, I don't know. I feel like it's like, it's such a, like almost like a power move there to be like, it's such a strong branding move, I guess as well. Like, we do fine beer. Like, if you're unsure of what you're going to get when you go there, I'm like, this shit is going to be exquisite. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, we, well, you know, to, to give credit where it's due, um, our, our, we had a designer that we were working with initially, a pal of ours, Steve, and he did, like, our, like, block letter logoing. Mm-hmm. Um, and he suggested that we call it Matron Fine Beer. And he's like really great with with branding and and logos and you know that kind of creative stuff design. Um, so he he kind of described the beers that he tasted from us over the years. And when we talked about like the stuff that we wanted to do, he was like, you know, I think I think the stuff that you're doing is different than what a lot of craft beer is. And he's like, I think you should call it Matron Fine Beer instead of Matron Brewing. And mm. we were like fuck i like that you know like that really yeah. stuck with us and so we we ran with it and um yeah like our our you know legal business name is matron brewing because that's what we initially were going to go with but he kind of pushed us in that direction and and for that i thank him because hell yeah I, you know i think it has defined like the styles of beer that we do in a way yeah. i think it i think it fits really well um when i describe your beer what like what i kind of think is distinctive really 
is refinement. Um, that's what like, like that's what I think kind of uh, kind of describes your style. What uh, like what makes you um, unique? You know, if I'm looking at uh, like looking at Yese or uh, like as this lager beer or uh, like our muff as this dark beer, even uh, like. Or like our dap or, or like our even janky here it's like nothing is ever um nothing is ever really kind of outrageously punchy or uh like or like are kind of really assaulting the palate it's uh like everything is everything is delicate nuanced like it's fine beer like like i yeah, think it really like it. i think it really fits uh like the name fits the product, I think. Thanks, yes. Man. Yeah, that's, uh, that's exactly what we're trying to do. Um, balance is like at the heart of everything that we go for. Like, I know some, there's like, I appreciate people pushing the boundaries and trying to like, you know, make stuff that's like in your face and big and bold and stuff. But we just want stuff that's drinkable, beers that are balanced and drinkable. And, you know, almost like you can really like dive into them and, and, pick them apart and like pick up all the like little tasting notes and, and all the thought that we put into it. And you could also just drink it and not think about it and enjoy it and talk to the people that you're with and like have a conversation and it not be completely focused on like the beverage at hand. Um, it be the social lubricant that it is designed to be. Right. So uh, yeah, that's kind of like the approach is, is it is refined mm. You know, it, it can be complex. It is complex, but it's also not so complex or so overwhelming that you're like, this is the main focus, right? Definitely. Even yeah. like as a sort of like talking, I'm just thinking about even just the word fine. What an interesting descriptor of a product that seems like something from like a, a, an earlier time. Like this yeah. is a fine product where like now – Fines are fine, but like, no, no, yeah. fine. It's I kind of, like, I also appreciate that. Like, it's fine, you know, it's, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. fine, or it's fine. Oh, yeah, I don't, you take it how you want. I don't give a shit. It's all in your information, <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Uh, but in the way when it's fine beer, you don't be like, oh, it's fine. I never once thought of that, and I'm a cynical prick, and I never once thought of that like that. I was like, oh, fine beer, okay, you know what I mean? Like, I never took it right. that way, and I, yeah, there's a big. Yeah, there's a big difference between yeah, it's, there's a big difference between fine beer and fine beer. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I, was, I never actually even ever thought of it. I never overthought the word fine until we sit, I'm sitting here listening to you guys talk about it just now. I was like, oh shit, what an interesting word. Like it's yeah. a cool descriptor. It's something different and unique. And I don't know, in this sort of uh, relatively saturated market of beer you know globally i mean locally whatever um you got to stand out somehow and that's like a cool way to do it most like once again there i can't there's not an i'm sure there's others that have done a similar thing but the vast 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 majority is like brewing or brewery at the end of the name no, there's nothing wrong with that at all but it's like a cool little little little, little addition it's a little, like something it. different you know yeah, it's a little different man you gotta try to be a little bit different when you're doing something, right? So, couldn't agree more. And yeah. I feel like the products reflect it, as Nate said, but also the I feel like the artwork reflects it. I feel like your experience in the tap room reflects it. That like uh, the beautiful marble you mentioned on on the bar uh, reflects it. The I remember there's a big mirror in the bar. It just feels like classy going in there. Give me, give me one of those. Uh, give me that crispy with that little fluffy head. <sighs> You know what I mean? Uh -huh. It's like, it's a nice experience. I'm going to send this beautiful patio and look at these trees and this beautiful Prince Edward County breeze. I don't know. It's, like, it's just like, I think it's just such a nice experience nice. that uh, yeah. you guys have going on up there. It's it's really cool. And just looking at the artwork and stuff. And like, what, I mean, speaking on that even uh, briefly, like, was there a sort of, did you just let the, art, the artist just be like, yo, this is what we're thinking? Like keeping it very... You know, in in playing in with the fine beers, are just like a very straightforward, simple, classy, effective artwork. Was there any sort of thought there? Yeah, once we once we had the uh, you know kind of the name and the like the logo word mark sorted out, uh, we started working with uh, a couple of designers. Like they're like a 
uh, husband and wife duo now. They they're called Parkdale out of Ottawa, and nice. um, you know we kind of presented to them the concept of how we wanted to approach beer and uh you know like some of our inspiration like as far as like the you know kind of mood and direction of the brand went and then like let them do their thing and Mm -hmm. uh they really came back to us with like a nice like almost mid-century inspired uh very like simple and elegant but like designed um totally mid-century kind of feel for the for the label and we absolutely loved it and it was like reflective of of the time and space you know like the county sunsets and you know the the beaches and the kind of landscapes and um we now deviate from that a little bit with some of the special releases and do just like some kind of uh like retro and mid-century inspired patterns that are just like beautiful and simple and classic and um i think it is like evocative of the beer too like it fits the feel of the beer um definitely like back to it back to like a time that was like kind of like you know innovative but also like like trying to keep it classy at the same time (laughs) yeah uh... i feel like you did know that though like simple names for the beer as well basically everything is a sing a single word as well if i'm not mistaken like almost everything or everything pretty much everything yeah we did a, a collab with uh with like collective arts back in the day and that uh that was called neck of the woods and we used like a a saying because they use a lot of like little sayings as their their labels so we're like no oh, well this one's like an, a moment to deviate too so i like that we'll take it when we can yeah that yeah. was a, that was a cool beer that was like our our first and maybe like at that point only attempt at doing like a a double ipa it was like a seven <laughs> percent a seven percent ipa for us so it was like a matron double ipa that well, and, and and as you yeah. as you mentioned that your link up beer were, like were, were, was Thank in that, oh, yes. uh, was, right. was in that vein as well, and um, yeah, this, and, and was this, this was something one. that I had forgotten to mention. Um, what like, like when I was kind of talking about how the name Fine Beer really fits is, um, and that was a great fucking beer, by the way. Your so uh, like your good. link up beer that they like, like the matron style double IPA. That's mm, it. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I love that. Like, I think it was the biggest that way that the matron style double IPA was seven percent, uh, seven percent or something like that. It was really yeah. fucking good. Yeah, um, yeah. But that's uh, like, but that again is just such a good example of uh, what kind of distinguishes a double IPA as matron fine beer because it's you know it's a, a higher ABV um ipa like then janky per se but there is that like there's still that level of refinement to it it's you know it's not gonna it's not gonna break past like 7.0 but it's still gonna have some bold hop character and like a like a like you know a bit of a beefier malt profile to it but uh, like but definitely still has um like a bit of nuance to it, a bit of complexity to it. It's still like, you know, it's still that refined matron beer. 7.5. It was. Yes. Oh, 7.5 even. Okay. Yeah. There you that, go. Was, yeah. that was the biggest beer we've made. Yeah. <laughs> to this day. Look at that. Beautiful. Yeah. I'm just checking the untapped. Like that was like a West coast, uh, kind of double. Yeah. Kind of like a West coast double IPA. Yeah. That shit was, I really fire. liked that one. I really so liked that one. Oh, good bro. Yeah. Oh, and that's also that. that's also a two word one too. I mean, it, that's like, true. I mean, I mean, it was called Link Up, so you didn't really have much choice yeah. in that one. But yeah, j- just, saying, that just saying, just saying. <laughs> so now there's two, the two beers with yeah. the double names, but it's like a cool overall brand, very consistent. I guess what we've established is super consistent with what's in the can, what's outside the can, like the way that you've sort of uh, like looking at these four beers side by side. I'm like, yeah, there's definitely like a thing going on. It's cool, man. It's like it's just dope. It's just such a unique thing that. Uh, I feel like the way that you're doing it is not very common Thanks. out here. Once again, one way to stand out is to really do yeah. you know, something that not everybody is, uh, is doing, which is great. Yeah. And I think, I'm, uh, you know, the nice thing about beer is there's just like a, a lot of room to be able to like, you know, express what you like about it and, and, you know, go in, in the direction that you feel is, is best with this product and uh yeah it's it's like a a fun a fun medium i guess to work in like it's it's supposed to be 
uh, a social lubricant. It's supposed to create good times and make people feel uh, connected. So that's kind of what we try to do with it and, and put our, our own take on it and express the things that we love about it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. How do you boys feel about a bathroom break? And mm. then we'll come back with the next beer and, uh, and keep going with the story. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. We have a pause button, which I only learned recently. So, all right, y'all. Right. See you in a sec, but you won't even know. And, ooh, three empty bladders, three <laughs> empty glasses. <laughs> shall we? We shall. We shall. Oh, I'm popping. I think, well, I, th- I think it's four empty glasses, but. Yeah. Four? Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're four down a, already. Maker. Maker. That's true. Well, I just meant three of us, three glasses. As right, if we right, all right. had one glass each, but you are correct, actually. You're actually more yeah, accurate. Yeah, we're yeah. doing Bobo, yeah? Oh. Um, well, what are we doing? Oh, sorry. Uh, oh. Justin, did you, you you just cracked Merrymaker, did you? Oh, I like that. Yeah, what do you guys got? Okay. Yeah. Well, okay, we so could we're... actually do. Do you want to do the different ones? What do you want to do? Uh, well, well so, so he's cracked Merrymaker. You don't have Merrymaker, but I do. Um so why don't I oh, crack Mary Maker? At, no, that's okay. That's okay. No, um, ain't no shit. Ain't no shit. Don't Do you know forget what? about I'm the gonna... beer in your freezer. Well, I'm gonna... I can either. Yeah, I, I've already grabbed it out. I've already grabbed it out. Uh, so I can either crack Mary Maker, or you and I can both do old pals. Or Justin might be grabbing it right now. I'm not sure. Okay. Which one did you get, Justin? You're doing Mary Maker right now, yeah. Yeah, I already opened them. Okay, that's fine. Who cares? Okay. So, do you know what? I'm going to show you guys this. You just tell me which one I should do. I got Old Pals and I got Bobo. Oof. You should do uh, You should do the Bobo. Boom. Done. Yeah. That's all I needed. So, tell us about Merry Maker, guys. Uh, this is like a, this is a, like our holiday beer, I guess. Our winter seasonal that we do. Mm-hmm. Um we've done it, I guess every year now. And it started back as like a homebrew way back in the day that I'd make just for my friends. And we called it Tannenbaum back then. I like uh, that. Our friend, yeah, Steve St. Pierre that did like our matron logo. He made like a little like label for it. I put it in bombers and bottle condition Ooh. it and just give it out at Christmas. And then, uh, I started doing it at Stone City as Tannenbaum as well. And then when we came to Matron, I was like, I'll carry on the tradition of that. But uh, we renamed it and kind of matronified it. And uh, we call it Merry Maker now. So it's 6.9% as opposed to like before it was like 8 plus percent. Damn. And, wow. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a, a strong saison mm-hmm. with uh, cranberry and spruce tips and from year to year we always kind of like zhuzh it up a little bit um so this year we used some pomegranate and a little bit of clementine in it and it's delightful hell yeah clementine is very like, as as my hebrew roy described it it's got some fruitopia <laughs> vibes <to it>. <laughs> <laughs> Love yeah. a bit of Fruitopia. Hang on. What well, you got there? You got Bobo. You got Bobo. That's I got our, Bobo. That's our, like, cult, the cult classic sleeper hit right there and a staff favorite. Okay. Um, it's like a, a, almost like a wit meets a saison, but could be a grisette as well. <laughs> if you it's... really want to get like, you know. Definitely giving Grisette but, vibes. Yeah, but it's like a, a light wheat beer, super dry, super floral, super fruity, um, almost like mm. a little white wine, light white winey. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's just I, like a tasty little thing. Has this changed? Last time I had this was October 2021. Has this changed? Okay. Yeah, we're always kind of fucking with that sense? one, to be honest. Little, yeah. yeah. Little... It's like, it's always the same idea. And we keep the same hops in it. We use locally grown Cascade and uh, and a bit of Barber Rouge, you okay. know, for the Little strawberry for, vibes. That strawberry French French hop vibe to it. Um, I love that. Yeah, yeah. this is tasty. But, it's definitely got that. Um, excuse me, it's four point two, so it's like uh, four point two. Yeah, um, like real yeah. soft, light. 
I'm getting more grisette, but it's like, you're right that it's kind of like a bl- all the things you were saying. I was like, yeah, yeah, I get it. It feels like it's like primarily grisette, maybe because of the lower ABV. And then it's got a yeah. lot of the other, like, it's not like over the top. Um, what's the word? Like that. Uh, what's the shit in says on? Why am I having a blank right now? Is that like something phenolic. like phenolic? Phenolic, thank you. Phenolic, no. no, which is not something I'm personally a fan of. I like them really like Hill Farm Steady, like where it's like really like just smooth and like it's got all of the Brett funk and the hay and then the lemon, the citrus and all those stuff, but without over the banana and the esters and all that shit. Like, yeah, we use a little yeast, uh, a blend of yeasts in this one, and this uh, and like we started on the low end of fermentation, so like kind of suppress the the phenols a little bit and nice. just like slowly ramp it up as opposed to just like letting it go ripping hard as a saison um right. it just makes it a little more you know a little more elegant you don't have to let it age out as much um and and we we hit it with a like a nice little bit of late edition hops on it like it's got like a, a nice little fruitiness that plays well i think with the yeast in it Hmm. It does almost smell dry hopped. Would you call it dry hopped or not? It's late edition, not quite dry. Uh, we do it like a light dry hopping on it. Hmm. Yeah. Very aromatic, very smooth. Um, this is delightful, delightful, yeah, and it's delightful. It's Mallory's favorite beer. It's Jess's favorite beer. It's just like a, it's just like a fun, you know, easy drinking, but like subtly complex beer. Gotcha. It's yeah. subtly complex. I like that. I feel like kind of as we've sort of been talking, like, you know, all the crispies and all the stuff, like th- this is something that I'm appreciating more as, as time has gone on, as far as like, as the beer journey has gone on, just like I'm you know, appreciating the lagers. I imagine maybe you boys too, but like I, there was a f- period early on that I love this stuff. And then there was a period for a while where I just was not into it at all. And I feel like it's come back around a lot. And I, I remember over Christmas and New Year's, I was drinking a bunch of, like, basically just saisons, like some Hill Farm said, some, um, mm. oh my gosh, what's the uh, the guys up north in near Tobermory that are closing? Oh, fuck, what's the name? Oh, Stillfields? Stillfields. Yeah. Fantastic. I had some of that. I was like, yo. Cool stuff, yeah. Super. I'm like, why don't I drink this style more? And I, I wonder if it's kind of coming back to the conversation about packaging before, because both of those bottles, one of them I had New Year's Eve and one of them had New Year's Day, actually. And um, they were both, you know, the Hill Farm said and the Steelfields were seven fifty, And then yeah. it, it, it's kind of <clears throat> comes back to that same COVID seller from, even though you can easily take the seven fifty to the face, that's 5%, it's no 6%, it's no problem. Like, it's not like it's a difficult thing to drink and it's, you know, pour a glass, chuck it in the fridge, keep, you know, whatever, it's, it's fine. You get you get through it in an hour, a couple hours. Mm-hmm. But um, there's just yeah. a psychological thing to it that keeps you from uh, that sometimes keeps you from reaching for that bottle, that big uh, bottle. Like, with, with share the it. same with the <sighs> same ease that you would a can. Depend like depending on what the situation is, like if you have someone to share it with or whatever the whatever the circumstance is. Yeah, yeah. yeah it um, seems like a sharing beer. Why should I enjoy all of this? delightfulness by myself you know? it yeah feels rude. <laughs> it Selfish. feels rude it feels rude yeah. <laughs> it feels but rude. this it's not rude at all it's kind of rude to share I'm like you want some of my 355 milliliter can you asshole are you kidding me this is all i have you that's want to take that that's awfully uh, presumptuous yeah, that's awfully it's presumptuous. all the stock and bobo i gotta i'm gonna pour one of these myself. <laughs> oh Jessica. yeah yeah he's gonna go with both there um uh, look, oh, I, I gotta double t- fist i, I gotta talk mate. about this um, merry maker here for a second. So mm-hmm. this, uh, please, this cranberry and spruce tip saison here. Um, what this is making me think of is a conversation that we had with Royal City back in the fall um, with a couple of their Christmas beers, and this is r- reminding me of one of them because um, this, like being uh, like being a saison, e- even though it's six point nine percent, like being. A bit higher in carbonation and with the like with a bit of acidity from the cranberry and whatnot it's mm. like like it is very light and cleansing on the palate hmm. and what hmm. i'm thinking about this as a holiday beer if i was you know saying having this with uh, with like a christmas dinner or whatnot you know after 
I've had all of these heavy things on the palate, like, like, you know, a bunch of turkey and gravy and uh, the, like, or maybe a bunch of these rich desserts and all, like, and all of these other things, something uh, like something like this would really cut through a lot of that. Um, yeah. like, like this, like this would be really great to cut through something that's been like really fatty on the palate, yeah. like a bunch of Turk, like a bunch of Turkey and gravy and uh, like, and stuff like that. I could really see this working really, really well with that that's as a holiday. Exactly day. what this beer is designed to do is like my feelings, like I love, I love a festive beer, but my, uh, issue with many of the festive beers that like were around when I was, you know, developing my palate, I guess, was they're were, they're were all dark or they're all sweet or they're all spicy. Yeah, like and, or heavy. You know, you're like heavy and like you know, not not that refreshing and like, you're like yeah, oh, cool. I'll have like you know like six ounces of this heavy ten percent spiced winter ale or something like that. And you're like, oh, <laughs> right? Uh, so, so when I set about making a holiday you know Christmassy beer I was like I want it to last all season and mm. I wanted to be able to like go with a lot of a lot of stuff and like be versatile so you know a nice little bit of acidity to it some brightness and like the ability to like cut through rich food you know no matter what it was whether it's like you know, as you said like a turkey dinner or some like brazy short rib or something like that you know this, yeah this guy's got the strength and the flavor and like the acidity to like to do that almost like a like a pinot noir or something like that you know yep you this know? could even work too uh like after a really rich dessert like if you've had yeah. like if you've had something that's like with really rich chocolate or something like that this like like mm-hmm. this would cut through that and be, like really be a nice nightcap after a big rich dessert yeah Mm. there you go I like that mm-hmm. and even the name is kind of perfect oh yeah, yeah for all that <laughs> we uh, we de- debatably uh, we were going to call it family time that's our working title <laughs> that's cute <laughs> I like that it's like you know the beer to drink with your family but, uh, Merry yep. Maker seemed more appropriate so <laughs> plus it's kind of one word yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly gotta keep that one word as much as possible Except for them collabs. Yeah, this yeah. is great, man. This is awesome. So let's get into some real shit. So obviously you're a craft brewery in Ontario in 2024. Okay. And yeah. if you are not living under any sort of a large rock, then you understand that, you know, things are not the easiest right now. And uh, you guys have made some very transparent and honest posts recently about the state of the business and, and where everything's at. And I feel like it's definitely resonated with a lot of people, whether it's the audience or your colleagues in the, you know, in the industry. Um, I'd love you just to speak on that and just sort of, you know, where things are at. Obviously we were saying off air, like we, we've talked about this at length on the pod, you know, as far as consumer um, decisions, as far as, you know, where they're at with what they're drinking, Gen Z aren't drinking a ton um, obviously the Ontario beer tax, a master framework agreement, inflation, interest rates, like you name it, there's all the cards stacked against any yeah, business. A thousand cuts. It feels like. <laughs> hundred right million now. cuts. And it, it's hitting everybody as far as, you know, personally and, and, and otherwise, but then I feel like the craft beer industry and alcohol, you know, alcoholic beverages, specifically so like you know if you guys have already been extraordinarily transparent about it which is i think what once we we did say this off air like you know really transparent and people really like can be like oh fuck yeah it's not just me you know like you know i think like mm-hmm. that's really what you're doing by sharing the reality of where you're at i think is extremely value for the industry and then also kind of poignant for the um audience to be like oh man like this is because re- i don't know if everybody is aware of, of really what, what what a lot of businesses are going through. So, yeah, if you don't mind, bro, like as far as you're comfortable, like expanding on on sort of what's what's going down and uh, where you're at. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, as you said, like in January, we put up a post. January, February are hard months for for businesses in general, for any business, uh, in especially like the hospitality adjacent sector and 
Um, you know, this year was an especially challenging one after a couple hard years post pandemic. Like we opened in 2019. We had, we didn't even have a year under us, uh, before shit hit the fan and like everything that we knew as normal and like how to operate changed like month to month or week to week. And, you know, you're just like scrambling to try to make the right decisions. Uh, and you know, it was costly. It was expensive to, to operate during that time. And, mm. and then, uh, and then, you know, as, as young, as young business owners, much like several, many other millennials during the pandemic, we had kids. Um, so that adds a whole new, a whole new dimension to things. Priorities can shift, you know, you're like less available to, to be at the business when you have a young kid and stuff like that. So, um, you know, you have to bring on other staff, which ultimately changes your, you know, your payroll structure and labor costs and, simultaneously throw in there the insane shifting of prices and uh like you know last four years the cost of malt has almost doubled uh which was where a lot of profit was before in Mm. craft beer so um that's been a thing taxes keep going up interest rates are rising and if you've opened uh open a brewery you've probably taken out a loan or two and um, so yeah, and we're not alone in that. The consumer's there too. Like cost of groceries has gone nuts. Uh, and then, you know, if you have, if you have any debt of some sort of mortgage or whatever, like you have, you have interest rates tied to that and Tell you're suddenly, it. suddenly your, uh, your expendable income, that money that you might buy a six pack every other week with is like, it's gone. So what's going to go? those little affordable luxuries that make life like nice. So, Worth uh, living essentially. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And like, that's, that's just kind of the state of things right now. And obviously people have to prioritize their, their spending and craft beer has been, I think one of those things that's like, you know, one of those luxuries that they buy a little bit less often. Um, and we certainly still have like a lot of loyal people showing up and, coming out but they're they're coming in less frequently and like i guess that's totally understandable right but uh yeah it makes makes business a little bit harder when things aren't as fluid and things aren't as frequent so um as a business we we put out a little bit of a call for help in a a very difficult month and people showed up like dry january is fully a thing uh, and now that's like being wrapped into February and, you know, the gov- health Canada is saying that you shouldn't, uh, drink more than this amount per week and, or per month or whatever. And you're like, okay, well, people are seriously taking this stuff to heart. And, uh, we're not claiming that beer is any sort of health product or anything, but it's, uh, it is about the sociability and the enjoyment of, other people's company. And, uh, that's, you know, I think people still appreciate that and have been supporting us, uh, through the slower months. But I think what people should, you know, understand is like during the pandemic, like everyone showed up for local businesses because they wanted to support them. And then obviously like that was super critical, but as, money became scarce like they've been a little bit more you know small business has been suffering they haven't been getting the support that they were getting before whether that's like your local restaurant or your local you know like retailer a uh, clothing shop uh whatever craft brewery things that kind of like add personality to like your your neighborhood or your community you know all these little guys are like really suffering right now um, and at the end of the day, there's no super simple solution to it. It's like, yeah, go spend your money. But if you don't have the money to spend, like, what are they going to do? Right. So, yeah. um, we've been doing our very best to, thankfully, like we, we are a small brewery. We have a 
a small team um, and we were going through a, a growth phase as the pandemic like kind of boom I'm gonna say because it was very much a vacuum of like everyone just spending money to support local businesses and uh, that like evaporated people could leave the country people could go travel people were not coming to the county uh, for summer vacation anymore you know uh, then yeah we've we've we're going through a growth period at that point so at that point we brought in more staff we were seeing more sales and then that dried up really quickly as like uh as cost of living went up so mm. we have now had to kind of shrink the business a little bit in a way like we've decreased our our, our staffing which is you know honestly super shitty thing to do as a brewery or as, a, as an employer and as a business owner like you know we had great people working for us that don't work for us anymore. Um, and ultimately that means like as, as business owners, like that work falls onto us and we have to, we have to be putting more work in. And that's a, a challenging thing to have to deal with, especially as like a, a parent and as a partner and, you know, you want to see your family more, but you also have to keep the business going cause that feeds your family. So, yeah, it creates a, a pretty pretty shitty situation, but you know, at the end of the day, we're trying to be positive and you know, like, uh, not in like some like overly optimistic way, but we know we make a good product. Uh, we know we, you know, bring joy to people and that uh, people like thoroughly enjoy what we do, and and that's like motivating and inspiring and. Um, I think we bring something unique to the market that uh, that would be, you know, missing if we just decided to like, you know, call it a day and close our doors. So um, we're we're pushing ahead and we're continuing to to try to hone our craft and be better like day after day and um, and I think people are are showing up for that and like, yeah, January sucked. February sucked. It's February 29th today. Usually from here on out, things start to improve a little bit as far as uh, beer drinking and cash flow and weather and, you know, sunshine and all that good stuff. So, uh, yeah, like we're, we're optimistic and this will be, this is a, an important year for Matron. Um, you know, we've had a couple of hard years and it will be a make or break year for us. So, uh, you know, if you, have the ability to go out and drink our beer, uh, please do, <laughs> you know, like, um, we, we want to be around, we want to come out on the other side and we think we make a great product. So, um, like you guys, you guys are saying it, we make good beer. So, uh, that's like the reality of the situation. I know we're not alone in it. When we put posted that thing in January, so many, other businesses, restaurants, breweries, cideries, wineries, you know, everyone, retail, retail stores, clothing stores, everyone's been saying it. They're just scraping by. So, mm. you know, if you, if you can be, if you have extra dollars, you know, go see someone that you appreciate in the community and, and tell them you appreciate them because they're probably having a hard time too right now. Mm. Yeah. yeah yeah man mm -hmm. uh thank you for being honest about all that i mean it's it's fucked yeah. up there's no other way to say it. it's fucked up it's terrible times yeah yeah it's uh it's hard and i mean like you know and then you throw in the the weight of the world and all the crazy shit going on right now you're like oh I mean, god yeah. it's yeah i constantly have a struggle with like the you know i don't want to get too like political but I will <laughs> a little bit. Do it's hard up. to see your government like supporting uh, the the death of children in other parts of the world when Preach. Uh, Preach. when our businesses are basically just like funneling tax money into it. It's like you know, like why do I do this sometimes? But uh, you know, yeah. at the end of the day, like we're just trying to also feed our families and find some some. Uh, some enjoyments and, and meaning in life too. So, you know, yeah. we like, 
we like to work with our friends and we like to, you know, do things a little bit differently and not have to like, you know, work for the man, I guess. But you know, one way or another, we all, we all work for the man somehow. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow. No, you're right though. Yeah. You're right. And it's extra. Yeah. Look, I don't, we don't talk about politics here intentionally, right. but you are right. Yeah. When you see the mismatch, like I'm even talking from the state, like, like just, I've been dealing with a lot of medical stuff and the medical system is insane. Oh God. Insane. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, like everyone's sick right now or is like, has to go to the hospital at some point. And you're like, and it's like a 27 know, like, month wait for a fucking to visit any sort of like specialist and like, They've just yeah. demo- or and, even, and like, like yeah. or even to just to just see someone in the fucking emergency room right oh, now. Dude. Oh, dude! Yeah. Oh, it's cr- crazy. I had to go to the doctor yeah. today, and I need to see a dermatologist. And he was like, "Oh, the wait's too long. I'm gonna have to send you to this other place instead." And I was like, "Okay, so now I have to go to a subpar place because otherwise I'm gonna wait eight to twelve months or whatever." He told me like. This is crazy. I I had a heart problem though. Like, what I thought was a heart problem last year, it's not. It's okay, but it was. Uh, eight months between going to the fucking emergency room and then getting into a cardiologist. Like, it was like... And I didn't even get prioritized in the emergency room with a potential heart chest issue, which is apparently the thing. And I waited for six hours and then went home. I was like, I, thought, I was going to walk out with the... What's the thing? The little... The the, the thing in your vein? Um, I'm having an IV. The IV. IV. Oh, it wasn't like an IV, but the thing that they put in there in case they need to take more blood. They left it in oh, there. I was okay. like, can you take it out? The nurse gave me attitude. Okay. I was like, I'm getting a fucking Uber. I'm going home. I'm, I'm not waiting anymore. This is crazy. I'll be here for 12 hours. And like, yeah, it, it's just when you're our, int- our home loan, our mortgage went up 40% in a year and we just moved here. Like, and it's, and it's money that goes into thin air. And then I've got potholes on my roads. The fucking, um, the goddamn healthcare system doesn't work. And then they're sending the rest yeah, of the money overseas like to murder children. Being dismantled in front of you, and you know, yeah, yeah, and like teachers all these other... are teachers are dropping out of, uh, dropping out of out. their jobs and stuff. And you're like, this, this, this is kind is, of ass backwards. Yeah, there's no incentive yeah. for anyone to do anything, and then you're letting all of our businesses shut down. Like you're letting all and the biz and small business is community. Small business yeah. is everything. So. Yeah absolutely echoing your sentiment i feel like most people watching because it's probably a lot of people in similar circumstances yeah i feel like i'm often like yelling into the echo chamber you know yeah (laughs) i don't see many people who disagree with the way that (laughs) any and it's not even look just make sure you go vote you know if there's an election you you're municipal you're provincial because like a lot of shit that's the issue around us in ontario at least it's it's provincial stuff like everyone i mean like Everyone wants to blame the federal government, but like nobody showed up to vote in the provincial election. Nope. <laughs> so. I don't feel like anyone is uh, absent of blame. If we're going to yeah. be honest, I feel like federal, provincial, city, it all is yeah. hot mess right now, and it's just really oh, unfortunate. Yeah. And yeah. it's just like the fact that the way that we're letting small businesses just suffer like this, and then calling it. I understand the calling in of the sea balloons and stuff, but that like. Oh god, that Bro, was yeah, like, that was just like insult to injury at that yeah, point. Like, you know, like uh, I, we we pay yeah. enough taxes in this country to make it sort of like you know what, give people a bit of a break. We got one for our business, and we happened to not have to have a brick and mortar business that cost us a million dollars type of thing. So we were able to put that money and pay it off. But yeah, other people yeah, weren't we, always able to do that. We ultimately had to assume that that like I'm not gonna say lost because it was it was money borrowed, but uh, but we didn't get that like you know favorable <laughs> situation. I yeah. guess the, yeah, yeah. the forgiveness of the part of it. there, and yeah, yeah, and then they they wrap it in and it's like okay, you got to pay this off in this many years at this rate on top and, of everything you know, like, else. Okay, that's, yeah, that's fifteen hundred bucks a month. You know, that's like uh, having a part time staff in that can you know a, a one employ somebody else and also maybe alleviate uh the sixth day that i'm at the brewery or something like that so i can spend time with my you know wife and kids sort of thing Mm. so um yeah it's shit but uh you will we'll we'll, i guess we'll figure it out and keep pressing ahead we don't have any other yeah. choice. It sucks. I mean, yep. it's, yeah, I don't hear, I don't know anybody who isn't pissed with any sort of situation on every side of the political spectrum. I think everyone's pissed at everything and no one's happy at the end of the day. Like, yeah. 
we all just want to be happy and live a fruitful life forget all the other stuff so it's uh it's super unfortunate but it does make me happy to see that you guys did you know rally the community behind it and that is really what craft beer is about i think that's a beautiful thing that you're able to do that and you know there's company we talked off air about like companies like revel cider who are also having a rough time and they were able to do a similar thing late last year which is great so yeah. it's encouraging i think that like when what i've sort of noticed is that when it looks like there's like some sort of a threat of a an important you know cornerstone small business to a community that that may not you know might not be there then people are like oh okay what do you yeah. need what do you need yeah. you know and and yeah. people come together and i think it's probably tenfold in a place like the county where it's so it's it's like old school community of things that you were describing earlier about all the farming and the little you know the trust with the the little huts on the side of the road and the, and the cool little stands with the local you know whether it's their own farm where they're getting their own fruits and vegetables and pastries and all this wicked stuff like i think the county is probably a fantastic example that would really get behind they would be devastated to see any business uh struggle yeah like everyone wants to see each other succeed out here and like yeah. it's such a small community that uh you know i feel like one business failing is like is the whole community yeah failing in a way so people show up and and they've been very supportive and yeah it's 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 amazing when you put a call for help out because you're putting yourself in a really vulnerable position and essentially showing everyone your cards like uh when people do come to help but it's like uh you know it's it, it was like overwhelming at the time like emotionally mentally physically like you know there's there's no staff at that point so like dealing with all that stuff you know it was all us at that point yeah and uh and yeah but uh now we're, we're catching back up we sold out of a lot of our product or like our inventory at that time so it's like you know, Sweet. now we got to get, go. get going again, which is great. We got to bring back on some staff that were laid off. Um, and oh, wow, really? That's yeah, awesome. yeah. Like we brought back our our brewing team a little bit earlier than we than we had planned for initially because we're like, hell yeah, we, we gotta get gotta get people going, which is good. That's what it's you good want. To hear. But, uh, it's good to hear. That's awesome, but, dude. Uh, yeah, it's like you know, let's we got to sustain that now. We got to sustain that. Yeah. 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 Like you Go said, though, have we a come... eat some chicken wings. You yeah, know? yeah, come through. <laughs> exactly yeah. order order a case or three online yeah. like go go like, call some friends up go see them you know meet ask for the, matron meet every bar yeah. yeah you know yeah ask for your, whatever your favorite brewery is you know yeah you can obviously biased support matron whenever you can but uh but whatever your local option is like it, it helps us all yeah no you're right it's uh th that's very encouraging though that's pretty dope that uh like the people were coming through for that that you're able to bring back your team that's i didn't, I didn't know that that's fucking sick dude it's uh and, and like you said earlier you know we're coming out of the you know february 29th as of the recording right now so like we're coming into march and if i'm not mistaken i think i checked the other day and it's like two weeks and we're in fucking daylight savings boys that's crazy like, ahead. yeah i could look lose a bit of sleep but then people i guess point being daylight savings uh obviously we, we had like 17 degrees here in hamilton the other day i think it was yesterday which is yeah. bonkers like the the amount of fluctuation is crazy <laughs> it's this weirdest winter of all time but yeah, you know th hopefully that means coming into march the weather's going to continue to get nicer the sun's going to be out a bit later maybe yep. like close to seven o'clock yeah, after... that, that was a heavy winter of, of lack of sunshine Oh, yeah, it was. That, it were. was a that was a dark winter. Yeah. Was, bro, it so yeah. was. Tiff gave me a stat the other day, and I think she said it was one of the darkest. Is either December or Jan? I forgot what she said. It was like there was four days of sun in January. I think that's what it was. Four yeah. days of sun, and it seeing, really did. Like ooh. it really did feel just very like gray. It was it, like it was a very gray January, which yeah. is. I mean, it's not like, like it's, it's only like really only in the past couple of weeks have we really been seeing like, like, like it's it's one of those things in the winter where it's like you get those really cold days, but with really mm. bright sun. And we haven't I'll really had that. many of those, but that's like, like but we've been having a bunch of those just in the past couple of weeks. But we feel like we haven't really been seeing the sun during the day mm. since like November. <laughs> True. Yeah. 
No. <laughs> and it makes yeah. such a difference to people's mood. And then the oh, even yeah. if it's just bright, you're like, yo, let's go out somewhere. Let's go sit somewhere inside, but with big windows yeah. so we can go and drink something and eat something and just have a nice little afternoon because we've been boxed up in the house because it's fucking freezing. Like, it's yeah. uh so like we're just like miserable looking outside and you're like uh, i don't really want to go out there but that sucks like those are your friends go you know yeah go have a conversation talk so, about your problems over a beer, <laughs> over a beer. the beer never always have solves some, the problems yeah Eat have some, some hot sauce, <laughs> sauce never. Like, you're making me hungry now say some, say some honest things you know yeah i like that i like that i respect that um do we want to do this uh last beer I think we've all got yep. different ones now. Again, I'm drinking. I'm drinking like two beers right. Oh, now. you're drinking two. So Justin's like <laughs> double fisting. So you should you should relax. I mean, you're a father. <laughs> uh, Nathan, you're also a father, but you can wild out. What do you got? Yeah, yeah. So so we can. So I think we can crack into this old pals because we got because uh, we got a story with it that we mm. need to hear about this year, don't we? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot that we had the same one. The old yes, pals. yes, yes, yes. So I haven't had this. It was two beers. Uh, from this collab mm-hmm. series um, with Beyond the Pale, which obviously yes. I didn't realize until this podcast that you worked there. Yeah, that's yeah, that's why it's called Old Pals. I like that. <laughs> it's all coming together for me, Justin. We're all, all, we're all old pals. I love yeah. it. Mm. Yeah, we're uh, we go we go way back at uh, with the Beyond the Pale folks there. Well, that's love cool. To see um, it. Oh, no, I think it, it's uh, it, and it's by chance that I have that, that I happen to have this one because I picked up uh, this pack of two beers at Beyond the Pale uh, back okay. in uh, back in December. I had the honey, I had the honey brown already, and now I'm ha- uh, like, and now I'm having the cream ale for the first time. Oh, nice! Like I saw you post the honey brown one. Yeah, um, I thought you would have had the other one, so that's great that you hang on to it. Look at that! It's like a bit that of worked fun. out really nicely. Look at that! Yeah, I. I used to work at Beyond the Pale, like, I don't know, back in 2012, 2013, or something like that. And that's back uh, in the real small space. Yeah, in the tiny space, the tiny space there. And they're like 250 liter system. Wow. And, uh, and my, my buddy Wayne, he, oh, he works he's their head brewer now so he works with them we got a great relationship and uh my one of my brewers bryce he has worked at beyond the pale and he was also like you know very influential on my brewing career so it's incredible that he you know works with us now we have the opportunity to have him on our team um and you know wayne used to work with roy at stone city we all worked together there at one point so like we just have kind of like crossed paths so many times professionally and, and is that um all good is good pals you know is that. that bryce of the former halcyon barrel house yes okay yeah, bryce okay oh, yeah yeah bryce McBain. legend in his own right yeah, yeah. absolutely wow, that's crazy yeah yeah, because yeah, I because I knew because I knew he was brewing at at Beyond the Pale for uh, for a minute. I didn't know he had made his way, he had made his way over to you guys. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah, it's been amazing to have him. He's such a such an important part of our team, and he's so talented. Um, I know he uh, he's had a bit of a raw deal at uh, at Halcyon there, but uh, yeah, yeah, we're we're very fortunate to have him and yeah, he was like, I, I can't explain like matron wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be in the beer world without the influence that he had put on me. Like my, he helped train my palate, introduced me to so many beers. Um, so it's pretty incredible that he, he's on our team now. Yeah. That's so cool. I totally, yeah. Like I did hear he was sort of, uh, he went from the Halcyon project, which was sort of, I guess, always under bows. And then, Sort of when that didn't uh, turn out to where it needed to be, you sort of was moving around a bit. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, because yeah, like yeah. the Halcyon stuff was great. Like yeah, really they're good. so good. I think I might even have yeah. one bottle left in the cellar somewhere. I think I should double check because that's awesome. That shit, yeah, they did some real killer stuff, like some real funky, um, like Brett stuff or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I love that. So mm-hmm. then, 
you did the two collabs. So there was a, you said a honey brown and, a, and this is the cream ale that we have here. Yeah. Yeah. Back to the old pals collab. So we're all old pals. So we wanted to make a beer together. Um, and we were just kind of chatting about just like, you know, shit that got us into beer and some of our first sips of beer and stuff. And one of the like, you know, things that came up was that, uh, both of our dads, like Wayne's dad and my dad, uh, were Sleeman's drinkers. You know, they, my dad loved the cream ale. His dad loved the honey brown. So we're like, oh man, let's make this. And Shane, the owner of, uh, of beyond the pale he used to play in like a touring like funk band and they were sponsored by sleeman so he's like i've drank more sleeman's like pound for pound than any other beer ever uh so it just like all kind of like fell into place oh, let's make these like you know kind of like homages to uh these like beers that. um and yeah like the, a little bit of a, a difference like the cream ale is a very simple beer it's like pilsner malt and cluster hops like we try to keep it like true to this like style of it is effectively a lager but it's fermented with an ale yeast and then lagered um and yeah it's it's a super approachable like you know i almost say it's like a, a very high-end macro beer in a way like in that approachability to it uh yeah just crispy and refreshing you know you can think about it but you don't need to think about it and it's almost gotcha. nice to like just enjoy it for for what it is, um, but uh, the like honey that. brown is a, a little more complex. It's got a little more sweetness. Um, you know, it's it's maybe less of a crusher, but uh, but still like I think really hits the mark of, of that nice like ambery ale, right? Mm. That was a really uh, th- the, the, that was a really interesting beer to have and a really enjoyable one. Um, and yeah, like definitely more complex. The, um, the reason I went for that one first when I, like when I bought the pack was like, I think that the last time I had a honey brown ale was probably the back Sleeman in the days when I, like when I would have had a Sleeman honey brown yeah, back, right? back when yeah. I, uh, back when I was, uh, I, I mean, I mean, I, like on the air, I'll say when I was 19, but you know, <laughs> you're yeah. old. Yeah, exactly. No, no. It, so, so it, like that was kind of interesting too, uh, the, like to go back to, and like it, it really was a throwback for sure. Even more yeah, so. Than, that's, like, yeah. That's exactly what we wanted to do, like with the branding. Like their their brand and our brand is is quite different is like aesthetically so trying to like morph them together would have been a <laughs> graphic designers like fucking nightmare so yeah <laughs> we like, like you know what like let's just like kind of lean into this more let's make like a pseudonym almost so we we're very like you know on the nose with it like old pals brewing we're like some bunch i of just saw that together i like and that and then uh very literal and then you know kept it just didn't come up with a name for it. It's very, it's just the style and, uh, and had a little description of like the collaboration on the back, which usually we like, you know, leave a lot to the imagination on our cans. Um, and yeah, wanted it to kind of be like a, a nostalgic, a nostalgic beer. You know, I think people are looking for that right now. They want, uh, they want comfort. They want, simplicity they want uh they they're craving nostalgia and like this was kind of our like uh endeavor into that it's a fun beer it was a fun project to do with those guys and i think it turned out really well i'd say you you succeeded in that regard yeah Yeah. i feel like i don't have cream uh very often either and uh no and it's it's a broad style like everyone kind of like approaches it in a different way like we had an account that was like you know this this doesn't taste like a cream ale i think uh you got this like mixed up with another beer and we're like no like this is this is actually for us like really to style like we you know we we did the research really hard and and tried to nail it like on the head it's it's supposed to be light spritzy high carbonation low hop like yeah you know cream ale always strikes me as like a baseball game kind of beer hmm uh Sorry, Interesting. Why is that? Yeah, no, you're right. Why is it a baseball beer? Uh, 
just just because it's it just like cream ale just kind of has like a quintessential macro vibe to me right um and that's what was available like, like it, and it, it's everything exactly what justin just described it's it, it's light it's high carb it's low hop it's that, that, like you know you could say the same thing about uh, like about like a lawnmower beer like, like that's just what it uh, yeah. like that's just the association that i have with it gotcha I respect it. Exactly. I, I used to drink cream ales a lot back in the day, and the Sleeman one too. So I understand. I think it's even cooler knowing that now. Like the Honey Brown, definitely. I don't think I've had a Honey. I don't think any other Honey Brown exists except Sleeman <laughs> anyway. And the Sleeman <laughs> cream ale in my head back in the day, I used to always like, like I feel like I'm when I say back in the day, like 2011, 2012, like I always used to like, oh, cream out. I, I, I sort of like it helped. It painted a picture of like this creamy beer. There yeah. was just this all oh, like kind of lagerish thing that was super cream. I used to really like them. Um, yeah. So it's nice and to like have it now. Takes a different approach to them. Like I, you know, it was Muskoka had one, and it was like they did. Yep. A little maltier, you know. There's a little more depth to it, a little more breadiness to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. There's been like a bunch of like kind of long-standing breweries that have hit the cream ale and everyone has a little bit of a different approach to it but yeah we we were trying to emulate a bit of a you know sleeman's vibe just like nice and crisp and and super easy to drink like as we said and we were throwing this around in the brewery like it's remarkably unremarkable (laughs) 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 minimal resistance to that beer you know like yeah that thing just like it goes down so easily that you can't uh, say no to it remarkably you unremarkable. And you're like oh shit that beer's gone um dude that's so awesome I'm and like I, down. Yeah, I usually like to have a little more like uh like depth to a beer and like you know be able to like like savor it and enjoy it a little bit more but it was kind of nice to make something that was just like so drinkable super straightforward i love it yeah. Um, I spilled a bunch of it on my hands. I just want to go quickly wash that. Do you guys want to keep talking while I run and do that, or do you mean to pause? <laughs> no, uh, no, go for it. We're go, all right, I won't be long. I'll be like a minute. Yeah, yeah. Fucking slob. <laughs> Paper towel. Sit around. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Yeah. This, is a, this is a really cool idea, and I think like I think the branding for it uh, the, the, that you jointly came up with it like is really on point, and it was uh, really cool to be able to get both beers at uh, at both at both breweries. Was yeah, that, that was... Uh, was that like logistically complicated to be able to sell both of them for, like from both locations at all? Yeah, we we uh, effectively just traded each other beer okay <laughs> there was invoicing you know we followed all legal procedures that needed to be followed but no of course you did okay how much you want how much you want okay cool you know here's a, here's an invoice here's an invoice done yeah there you go <laughs> yeah and, but it was that was like part of the experience for us was like you know we wanted to have that like the at, wherever you got it we wanted you to be able to try both of them yeah and uh we did a little thing at our brewery uh we just like we did a mix two four pack and printed like a small run of t-shirts and put them in the packs so there'd be like you know a large beer t-shirt in the two four you know it was like the first people to come in to get it would get a t-shirt of it so which well which is like and, and even that is very um like macro macro, macro case of the time you know <laughs> That's re- that's really dope. That's uh, like you you gave a lot of thought to the experience of this one. Yeah, just trying to be fun, you know. Like uh, there's so much heavy shit and serious shit in the world. It was like this is like a fun little a fun little thing that kind of like reminds you of uh, of simpler times or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Yeah. It, it definitely probably brought this out at the right time for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. This is this is this is really good. This is really enjoyable. I I don't think of cream ales as a style that like I frequently want to crush. No, um, it's not something but, I usually reach for. Yeah, but, 
but like, but like this is this is very enjoyable. I yeah. like I'm. We you know we took we, again like we we took our own approach to it. We used a blend of like Canadian domestic pilsner and uh, and locally grown and sourced malted barn owl stuff. So you know you still get a little like complexity from the barn owl malt in there. And uh, and yeah, local hops. Traditionally, cluster hop was like the hop to use in a cream ale, and it's grown. It was grown in Prince Edward County, so we. Uh, oh, bigger. There you go. For that. Um, well, you know what? Like this, very much still tastes like a matron beer. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> like which is uh, like which is not at all surprising. We used a British, like a British ale yeast in it, and uh, and then lagered it. Like gave it like you know three weeks cold, cold conditioned and uh cleaned up real nice and there you go that's a cream ale love Ooh. it yeah it's got that um that minerality that salt excuse me that saltiness that's very consistent through all of the beers tonight like it kind of settles like i feel like it's it's per- like super perceptible up front and then it kind of like just blends into the experience which is uh unique and works really well with all of the styles yeah, well water, man. I mean, like the, some of the greatest beers, uh, some of the like, you know, the the pale ales, the the Burton on Trent waters, like it's all been very mineral rich right. waters. It sucks it sucks for like maintenance. I'll tell you that. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? Tank, you know, like, you tank, like you know, all the time. But, what does it uh, do? Sorry, it there's just like you'll get all sorts of like uh, calcium settling out like into build your, ups uh your hot liquor tank and so um you gotta clean that out regularly deshale it we call it um how do you do that how do you do it yeah uh i mean you drain it and then let uh let it dry a little bit and the stuff like kind of flakes off the sides if there's any there and okay scoop it out with a a shuffle in a bucket basically (laughs) Or precipitates out, and then do acid washes on it. The acid will like break it down. Huh? I ask because Hamilton has really hard water, and we have all this fucking. I think it's called lime scale. Yeah, lime scale. It's like Across... kind of calcium sulfate buildup, basically. Okay, and it's like all on our faucets. Like, what do you do to get rid of that? I mean, at home, just use CLR. <laughs> CLR will do it. Okay, so you just hold it, CLR. just dip it in there for a bit, and like, we, we have to use like mega clr basically which is like nitric acid uh, okay that's great good to know because it's a it's a weird thing that didn't happen in montreal and we're like what the fuck is with this water oh yeah montreal that's weird that in hamilton that's uh that you really had water we're yeah like i knew that like i knew that was a thing in kw like ever like, like everyone has water softeners in their home in kw yeah i think KW, they, they get their water from groundwater it's like a yeah big- out there whereas like yeah. uh like toronto for instance like they're they're lake water and so it's all cleaned out lake water and it's it's like nice and easy to drink and kind of easy to work with and water profile and stuff and up it's in the ottawa, same in, it's the same in ottawa we've got great water here in ottawa yeah. it's like ottawa's not lovely lovely water to deal with it's so soft make fantastic czech style beers in ottawa yeah. Hmm. <laughs> that explains yeah. a lot. Or you make anything it's like so easy to easy to doctor the water, but um mm. yeah, that's that's something that like we don't change that much. Like we don't have an RO system at our brewery. But one day perhaps like we'll install one that can keep up with our water demand. But right now it's it was a bit of a you know, a point for us was like, Yeah, we're a farmhouse brewery. Don't change the water too much, learn how to work with it, you know, use it to your advantage a bit like people have brewed with hard water for a long time. It's not the easiest to clean with. We have a water softener hooked up to our wash down hoses so we can mm-hmm. like, you know, clean, clean more effectively. Um, but, uh, but yeah, in the hot liquor tank, we just go straight, straight, like filtered, you know, we have a, a pretty full on filtering system, but, uh, but yeah, it's filtered well water and, you know, you work with what you got. It keeps it 
authentic to you guys and makes it a little bit more of a unique experience. And I think that's what like, oh, this is not what you want to be. You need to differentiate yourself somehow. And you've yeah. got the, you know, it's, the outside. It's, the inside. it's almost easy to just like, if, if I have a blank slate to work with, I can make my water profile, do whatever I want. And, but you know, if this is the water that we have, this is the beer that we're making for the area. You know, this is a reflection of the County. This is County beer. I like that. This is county beer. That's beautiful. Um, yeah. No, dude, this is awesome. This has been like really dope to get this full picture of everything that you're doing. I feel like I learned a ton about like everything that you guys are, you personally were doing beforehand um, and, and during this. But like, you know, looking, particularly based on what we just talked about, what's the future of Machen looking like as far as your concern like where do you see it going what are you hoping to achieve with uh, what's going on and also even in the nearer future is there anything that people can with this episode coming out in three to four weeks like what's the what can people look forward to what's the vibes um yeah i mean uh our our goal is to persevere and, and make it through uh to you know better times um on the short term, yeah, we got some some fun beers coming out for the summertime, and uh, we're going to be doing um, our 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 petite IPA, like our little session IPA in the LCBO for the summer, which will which will be like a you know nice avenue to to explore with them. Um, Dope. Yeah, I just want to you know keep organically growing the company. Like I I don't think we're going to be like you know a huge huge brewery by any means. Like that's not the goal i want to be like a nice a nice size brewery we can be small but support all of our you know team members in a in a productive way and try to grow with them too and uh and yeah like i want to develop uh our our space a little bit more our property a little bit more so you know the experience on site continues to evolve and you know, there's maybe some other other offerings on site that's not just uh, not just Matron, because mm-hmm. um, we have yeah we have like such a great property that uh, be wicked like a little bit of a, a like a creative collective of different businesses on site. So hmm. that's something we're working on right now, um, and yeah, uh, do some more events like we've been wanting to get some some more energy and. Uh, and events happening at our our brewery space over the you know pandemic with having kids and all sorts of restrictions and bullshit like that it was just like you know kind of takes the joy out of that so sure does. Um, you know now we now that we have kids and we're like they're they're at like a little bit more mm-hmm. of a you know an age where we can take them out and get them in the community and stuff um and like you know all the the chaos of 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 restrictions and stuff are gone. Like we can, we want to have more events and put more energy into that and do some more exciting things at the brewery. Dope, man. You got a, such a good spot for so many things. So it's, yeah. uh, that's cool. And that's probably going to be the, what people are looking for. Maybe I imagine this coming summer that, uh, that's what people are going to want. I would imagine that people were going to want to support local smaller businesses, breweries, wineries, distilleries, etc., more than ever, because they know how cutthroat the shit is right now. And if you're going to go and I don't know, spend money on anything, spend it local. Yeah. At, at any point in time, and uh, yeah, that's really cool, man. I feel like it's 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 great. It's really cool to see that you know even through the hardship and the the you know like the honesty and that sort of like. You know, it, it takes a lot of, of guts to be to be able to do that. And I think it's, like, super commendable for you guys to be like, look, yo, shit's rough as fuck right now. Like, this is what's up. And people are like, got you, bro. And then they came through. And now uh, that's going to be so heartwarming for you guys, I imagine, and just being like, oh, man, like, all right. They yeah, I'm, I'm you. Also, like, pretty stoked for the summertime because uh, I think a lot of people who, you know, are part of our community network, like, you know, outside of the county will be able to come visit. And, and I, I love that interaction. I love being able to spend a day on the bar, like connecting with people and talking about beer and 
you know, seeing familiar faces and stuff. So uh, I think we'll you know, start seeing a lot of that coming back soon. And, uh, oh, yeah. and yeah, I look forward to that. And we're also doing a bunch of, uh, like collaborations with, with our friends. Cause that shit keeps us excited and that keeps us stoked. And like, that was really hard to do over the last few years and we didn't do enough of it probably. And, uh, and yeah, so like right now we've got several, several ideas percolating, um, and developing that, uh, they'll be unrolling in the next few months. Hell we'll be excited to watch for that. Yeah, yeah bro. Um, Dude, that's amazing. Um, I'd love to hear all this. Thank you so much for hanging out. Um, we just come up on three hours, so I knew it would be a little longer than uh, I, I sold it to you as. But uh, we had a lot to get in, and I feel like we really got like the real picture, and I feel like people understand where you guys are at, what you're trying to achieve, what you're doing. And, uh, man, honestly, I'm, these beers are so fucking good. So good. Yeah, really. It's truly fire, and I appreciate it. We, I, we both really appreciate you, man, taking the time to come on and, you know, once again, just being honest and transparent in the in this interesting time of you know hopefully very temporary interesting time of uh, human history and uh, craft beer and yeah man, it's yeah. great. Thanks for having me, guys. I, I really appreciate it. It's always uh, you know nice to chat with you and uh, yeah, I've seen you in person a bunch since, but uh, yeah, it's nice to be able to do this like formally on the on the podcast. So finally. Absolutely, man. We, Honor and a pleasure. We we both really appreciate you, and uh, it's been a genuine pleasure chatting with you. Yeah, thanks, For, guys. So Hope stick around. Go on. Yeah, yeah. One person and share a beer. Oh yeah, I got. Uh, we already Tiff and I were talking the other day about coming up this summer. And I know Nate Nate goes there regularly and stuff, so um, I'm excited to get back. So I was definitely going to give you a shout next time we're in town because we were there like for like one night in august it was super like mad brief i think everyone was closed by the time we got there because we came from montreal it was so didn't didn't get to do it but next time um we're gonna stay like at least like you know a bunch of time and it's just it's such a oh man i love the county so much it's just such a vibe it's such a cool place and i feel like i love that i know that all the i've known so many people in ontario and so many people in quebec which always tripped me out that the quebec people love the yeah, county so they, they, they love fucking the love the county love it's quebec. sick you know, quebec they, is amazing yeah um which makes it even cooler man so it's like you know i think there's a lot of people rooting for you and there's a lot of people wanting to see you just thrive and succeed and just keep winning dude so uh keep doing what you're doing uh stick around we're just going to wrap this up on air then we'll cut off the uh the feed and we'll, we'll finish up off air but justin brother thank you again man appreciate everything that you're doing uh this was a great pod you're a champion guys thank you for watching and listening if you enjoyed the episode smash the thumbs up hit subscribe below and hit that notification bell nathaniel ding so you know when the new new drops follow us everywhere at beer with podcast and check out the long form oh, audio look at that effect look at that effect right there what happened Boom. there <laughs> what happened there there was a fireworks effect there <laughs> Oh, Justin is just coming through. Oh, he's pulling all the stops. My God. <laughs> I like this. But I think people need to find out how Justin's doing this because uh, I don't know if it's a part of this particular software. Was it a part of the software? I I, I love you guys. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to. <laughs> All right. So, okay. So, so anyone who's just listening on the audio is going to have to check out the video of the, uh, like of the ending right now. <laughs> Cause I even missed it. I'm going to rewatch it right after we finish. <laughs> just as out of control. Um, it's, I can't remember. it's, it's, go, it's literally popping off out here. It's like the 4th of July. It's like Canada day. It's like fucking St. Jean Baptiste in this bitch. Um, <laughs> I can't remember what I'm supposed to say. I don't know. Love you guys. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Get it in you. Cheers, guys. Cheers, y'all.